This episode is brought to you by Red Riding Hood, the manga-inspired take on the classic fairy tale for readers grades K through 2, written by Christina Oxtra. In Red Riding Hood, readers review the classic story in a brand new way, with twists in the story, more diverse characters, and featuring Japanese aesthetics incorporated throughout. Red Riding Hood is part of a series published by Capstone and written by various artists with unique takes on your childhood favorites. Look out for Red Riding Hood, available on Amazon and your local bookstores. Congratulations, Christine, on your first published book. The link is in the show description. What's up, everyone? Welcome to the Crossroads Podcast, the PlayStation voice of Boss Rush Games. I am your host, Laron, joined by Nelly. And from Land Party is Logan. <laughs> and also, we have a special guest here tonight. Our, our boss is here, which means we, we're supposed to be in our best behavior, but we kind of ruined that already. Yeah, uh, yeah uh, Corey's here with us tonight. Hey, everybody. Hello. I'm here. So, uh, what's how what's <laughs> so what's 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 good peeps how, how are we uh it's a, it's a tuesday night uh you know it's kind of it's kind of kind of chill i guess it how is it's it's let me install the action yeah it's <laughs> i'm look i i probably recorded that last 20 minutes it's going at the end of the show it's gonna be like oh well post show footage well i know it's <laughs> I know it's, I, I know it was live on Twitch. I know. <laughs> yeah. 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 We've already got a rowdy. We've got already got a rowdy crowd up there in, uh, on Twitch tonight joining us too. So welcome to you guys, by the way. Uh, hopefully you guys stick around because we got a lot of PlayStation stuff to talk about today. Um, so uh, let's just go ahead right into the housekeeping. Uh, Crossroads is the po- PlayStation podcast here from Boss Rush Games, where each week we are live on Twitch.tv slash Boss Rush Games live. We come together to bring you the latest news, rumors, discussions, and games in the world of PlayStation. If you can't join us live, you can head over to youtube.com slash Boss Rush Games or your favorite podcast service every Thursday to listen to the show. Uh, Remember to like, share, rate, and review us whenever you consume our show. And check out our family of podcasts and all of our content on BossRushGames.com. So once again, welcome. Uh, Give us some love out in the chat if you please. (laughs) All right, so we ready to talk about some PlayStation news, guys? I don't know. Oh, I kind of want to go back to the feet discussion we were having. Oh, uh, you know? Oh, God, no. This is how Patreon's going to happen, bro. Right? I know. <laughs> is, hey, buy Corey's feet. Yeah. Okay, the ten, okay, okay, okay. The $10 okay, hold... feet tier, $1 per toe. Okay, see, oh, I, was just, I was just about to, I was just about to ask. I was going to go around the room just now, like, okay, Okay, you know we're gonna start. We're gonna start with Nelly because ladies first. Uh, Nelly, how much do you think you could get away with charging <laughs> if you were going to put the merchandise out there? <laughs> now, which merchandise are we talking about? We talk about the feet pics of the podcast <laughs> scene. <laughs> we ain't doing an OnlyFans account, girl. I know this. This podcast <laughs> getting real dark. Uh. Logan, what's Logan? What's your price tag? What do you think you can get away with? Because oh, I, I want to say fifteen bucks, man. You're like, there, there's got there's got to be some dudes in the ch- in the chubby fat dude for me. <laughs> that somewhere. crowd exists, my friend. Welcome to the club. Every, every every trucker gas station's got that guy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right, all right, all right, Corey, as as the married guy on here, what do you think? I. <laughs> I mean, well, you you can... <laughs> look, if judging judging by what my wife says about my feet, I think uh, I would have to pay someone to take the pictures. Okay? <laughs> so, uh, you know, she's the she's the one that's like, you should probably be wearing socks right now. Oh. It's like, OK. Oh, Mo- Momuro in chat is just eating this up. <laughs> 20 bucks for an ankle. <laughs> <laughs> I am I'd be lucky. I am wearing I'd be lucky. low cut socks if you want some ankle. Oh that. my god. First one's free, everybody. <laughs> Let's not get <laughs> that. Let's not make that. <laughs> <laughs> 
you guys, you guys, you guys would nobody would want anything. I'd be lucky if I could wear three dollars because uh, because I've never had like a pedicure in my life or anything. So you know what, it is what it is. You know, hey, at least at least I get in the shower and I wash those things. But that's that's as far as it goes. I mean, I wash my feet too. That doesn't stop them from being ugly. It just stops them from <laughs> smelling bad. Can yeah. I make a request though, Corey? When we when we post this on YouTube, can we call this one the feet episode and the thumbnail just a. <laughs> Can we, can we please make Everybody this send me a picture of your feet, and I will cut them together yes. in Photoshop. And uh, can we make the PlayStation logo out of. Feet? Yes, we're gonna make oh the PlayStation god. logo out of our feet. Oh my god, so- Sony would never send us content after that. Hashtag feet fetish. <laughs> maybe right, we should that- send Sony our feet. Maybe they, maybe that's what they're into, and they'll just send hey, us whatever hey, we want. Uh, shoot, hey, we might get all sorts of support then. Yeah, hmm. not yeah. a bad idea. Mm-hmm. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. It's Look, one me. foot, one foot, some Indies, you know, two feet, some some first party, you know. Some what I first mean? party. <laughs> get, hey, we're get your knees and ankles in there. And really get like a whole whole plethora of stuff in there. You know, I was thinking, I was thinking, what, what about the peripherals? Oh uh, man, that's that's gonna have to be like a, I don't know, over the shoulder, finger in the mouth look. You know? <laughs> <laughs> look like. I need that HD camera, guys. I'm poor. <laughs> you know. Oh, speaking of which, one of our one of our teammates here needs a. Uh, uh, we need. We're on the. We're about to start a campaign to get Nelly a Blue Yeti microphone. <laughs> yeah, we gotta make. Yes. It <laughs> our first. Now, yeah, our first uh, crowdfunding goal, guys. Blue Yeti microphone for Nelly. Yeah, for Nelly, and you know, um, I don't know. We'll think about it, but you know, the biggest contributor might get some swag from us. You know, hey, might get some feet pics. Um. <laughs> now, Lerana, imagine this with the PC news that came out today. What about feet in 8K? <laughs> 8K feet. <laughs> I well, saw that. Well, I saw that TV at well, uh, at Best Buy. That 80 inch 8K TV. Okay, I wonder. Yeah, right. Yeah. They were show- they were showing some fingers on there. I mean, what's the difference in showing some toes? Okay, I'm just saying. Well, here's well here's what I know. Like uh like the the Nvidia stuff uh, dropped today. Well, the Nvidia uh, reveal dropped today too. And you know, hey, I might have to actually like you know like upload some pictures and stuff. And you know that I got I got to find a way to get a fifteen hundred dollar graphics card. You know. <laughs> hey, second crowdfunding campaign. Let's start with the microphone and then we'll work up to that graphics card. <laughs> 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 all right all right so here we go we're, we're gonna roll into the news we uh, we we're, we're gonna continue having fun though but we, we're rolling to the news now all right so <laughs> the first, chat just says okay. i will donate in all caps <laughs> yeah let's do it all right <laughs> yeah, that's that's what i'm talking about hey we hey Nelly, you got that love you got that love you know what? This is actually going to be, right gonna be the extra life. <laughs> yeah, this is the extra life show. We might have to go to YouTube for the extra life stuff because no, Twitch no, no, doesn't no, no, no. allow certain body parts that. Uh... <laughs> Your extra life, like if you donate so much for extra life, you get big <laughs> Like, <laughs> oh. we're gonna raise money for the big beautiful kids with our feet. Yeah. Our, 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 our boss, did you did you did you think that we were gonna be the the wild the wild children? Or... <laughs> I mean, <laughs> when you brought us on, <laughs> as somebody who's been podcasting for six or seven years, this opening twenty minutes has been the, uh... yeah. <laughs> I lost for words. Here's, oh my god! Here's the thing, though. I'm all right with it. No, oh, okay, okay, so. okay, okay. okay. He's, look, I've been hey, trying hey. to. I've been look. We added some people to to. I host our, our Xbox show, and we added we added some people there, right? And I I listened to the episode we recorded this weekend, and it like adding different personalities and like jokes and stuff really made that show more dynamic. And now we're here. This is this is this is great. You know, this is what I want from this. You know, this is we're just being ourselves, man. You know, we joke around. Yes. We're all friends here. Mm-hmm. You know, off cameras where all the, where the knives and the guns come out. Yeah, yeah, and, <laughs> and the socks come off. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> Just stay wrestling. wrestling. Yeah. Uh, Just don't stay wrestling. They friends behind stage when they get in the ring. All action. Yeah. Hey, maybe, hey, maybe we should switch. Uh, maybe we should uh, go over to YouTube after, after the show is over because you know I don't want to violate the no nipple rule for Twitch. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, I can't make any promises. <laughs> Just all right, get all some right. get some DualShock pasties and we'll be fine. Oh, you, 
<laughs> no, but this is the whole discussion we had. <laughs> this is the legit conversation we had. And I don't remember if it was this show or... <laughs> this is the last one. They're going to be like, we can't have them all here anymore. <laughs> um, uh, look, all I'm saying is it's... This opening part of the show is better than those really bad dad jokes I made on on Twitter today to promote the show. So, no, no, you had one good, you had one good zinger in there. Look, you had know, one good one. It was a good one though. It was, it was some good stuff in there, man. <laughs> Look, I'm working, good. I'm working on, I'm working on my writing skills for some new content coming up that we'll talk about later. But I mean, I'm, I mean, Meg is pretty upset at you, but <laughs> yeah. Well, look, she every time I say anything, she just. <laughs> I, my phone lights up. What are you doing? Shut up! I thought you wanted to succeed. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa! That's pretty harsh. I'm sorry. Every successful person I know sells feet pics. So come on, <laughs> where are we going? Right, right. Hmm. Oh, or look, there, she or... there she is. There she is. Corey is my nightmare. <laughs> See, I'm just saying. Oh, okay, she's like okay, we've been okay. friends for like a long time. So. Hey, hey, you know, you know, like you, you, you always hurt the ones you love. Yeah, well, she hurts me. That out the hard way. <laughs> uh, All right. Full circle. Full All right. circle. So, 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 let's talk about some first party games uh, coming to PC yep. at Sony. Sony's exploring the idea of bringing more first party t- uh, games to the PC. Uh, so. Here's the um well here's the news blurb. It was uh, put out from IGN. Basically, following the release of uh, Horizon Zero Dawn on the PC, which is actually moving a bunch of units now, which is which is which is amazing. By the way, I, I will say this: like, have you noticed how games like they have like a, a very good uh, sell through on console, mm-hmm. and then and then as soon as they come to the PC, they they winds up going over the top. Like uh, like Death, Death Stranding had that, um, Monster Hunter World had that for sure. As a matter of fact, Monster Hunter World made Capcom's year in yep. 2018. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, uh, and Horizon Zero Dawn is 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 making making that uh, making that one again for uh, for uh, for Sony and uh, that was uh, Guerrilla Studio, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So. Uh, so, so following that success, Sony is looking into the idea of bringing more of his first-party games to the PC. Uh, in, in, a, um, in a 2020 corporate report, it, it, it was stated that they will that we will explore expanding our first-party titles to the PC platform in order to promote further growth in our profitability. Now, I know it's all about profitability and stuff like that, but let's just look at it this way: like it's another way of getting more. It's a way of getting more people to play more PlayStation-centric games. And you know what? That's a that's a wonderful feeling, especially for for me, the guy who. Who is an, who is a PlayStation player that crossed over to PC, and you guys like snapped me back to PlayStation? <laughs> yeah, well, you know, somebody had to do it. Uh, <laughs> I think this is a good move for Sony if they do decide to do it, though. Cause especially like if if it's not day and date, like I think that's even better for them, right? Because the hardcore Sony fans are going to buy PlayStations, right? Obviously, every single console has sold over a hundred million units, except for one. Right. So it's a uh, it's a no brainer that they're going to buy the exclusives. Right. I think what yeah. over like seven or eight of the exclusives have sold over 10 million units, I mm-hmm. think. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then once their next game, like I think putting Horizon out is smart because it's basically people are paying you for your advertisement for the next game, essentially. Yeah. So uh, plus, you know, the, the PC version will theoretically would be optimized and, and run a little bit better, run them a little bit smoother, maybe have some extra features that can only be done on PC, yada, yada, at, you know, as of the PlayStation 4, right? We don't really know what the PlayStation 5 can really do yet. Uh, but I think it's smart, you know, and then and that also gives them a direct, uh, gives them direct competition with Microsoft because they will be on the same platform at the same time because like mm-hmm. console players are console players, right? Like people have been telling me to build a PC forever. I had two people build me PCs. They both died within six months and I'm like, I'm never doing this again. And like, I'm just, I'm just a console player and I would rather just plug it into my TV and have it work. Right. I, I understand that PC has higher frame rates. It can theoretically do more. You can do mods and everything. That's all well and good. I want to sit on my couch. I want to be lazy. I want to put my feet up on the coffee table, have my wife yell at me to get them down and play some games. Uh, but 
for those hardcore PC people, right? Like you get the optimal experience theoretically, even if it's a couple years later, uh, after the sell through, after the, the PlayStation audience has pretty much eaten it up, everything. So, uh, yeah, I, I think it's, I think it's a smart move. It's a, it's a, a smart way to directly compete with Microsoft and it's a smart way to advertise for the franchise say, okay, you can play this game, but you can only play the next game on PlayStation five for the first three, two, three, four years. So, yeah. And I think when we look ahead as, as the, we've talked about, what's the one thing Xbox really has going for it. And it is game pass and how game pass is able to translate to all PC and Xbox for and right. Sony. We've seen them take steps into the PC world <laughs> by buying stock at Epic game store. But I think this is just another continuation of their commitment to let's be more about we want to we want this to be a place that everybody can play on and we want these games to get out everywhere. Um, I think Horizon's a great test to see exactly how well this could do. Um, being as great of a seller as it was on console and then to to be here, I I, I think for it coming to PC was awesome. But then I see it as the next game I think that's going to be coming is a remastered Spider Man especially in the spring of next year, put Miles Morales and maybe a remastered Spider-Man. That could be awesome. That could be huge for PC. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I, yeah. <clears throat> Some strange reason. God, weird. Mm. All right. I agree with that. The whole thing about Spider-Man. As a matter of fact, I'm thinking that's going to be its most likely contender alongside God of War. For some strange reason, like I see, I see, I see a lot of their first party titles coming to the PC, right. but I don't think I don't think we're gonna see The Last of Us. I I don't know why. I feel like The Last of Us is like just that treasure that they kind of want to keep to themselves. Well, there's you know? there's certain things that you could put there, right? Like you can put right. Ratchet and Clank there. I think people would have a blast with yeah. that. The Uncharted trilogy, uh, yes. maybe maybe not Four and Lost Legacy, but like the trilogy you could put mm -hmm. there. Uh, you know, games that. <laughs> I feel like Sony's in a position where they have like these gems that you need to keep on PlayStation, but there are mm. games in their stable that like, oh, we can have a PC release and have like a second uh, wave of, of of fandom there. I think the Uncharted trilogy is a great example. I think uh, maybe the older God of War games would be a, a decent example of something they could release there. Uh, See, I think you put the I think you put the original ones on there. I don't think you put the new God of War on there. Yeah, I don't either. You don't, no, you don't I, think so? No, I would have said I would. I didn't think Horizon. I thought Horizon would be a gem yeah. that you would keep on PlayStation as well. But they they see. I think the the but reason okay, why they you, did that was because they already had the Decima engine running for Death Stranding, and they're like, oh yeah. well, they got that running on PC pretty well. If we're thinking about doing games on PC, maybe Horizon's a good jumping off point because somebody already did it. And yeah, I know in the chat they said that Horizon launched with a few bugs and everything. And, and I think it's just a learning curve for a studio that doesn't develop for that hardware. You know, and I understand yeah. that it's built with uh, a similar architecture, but it's not the same. So optimizing is always probably pretty tough. I mean, you know, let's look at console games like Madden has had a horrible launch with glitches too. I mean, it's hard to make video games. It's just period yeah. point no, point it's just. not. <laughs> as a as a PC, you gotta get the right testers. As <laughs> yeah, someone well, that, who that, as that someone who true. made Pac Man for my calculator, okay, I can tell you. No, I'm just kidding. It's probably extremely <laughs> difficult that I don't have the brain capacity to even fathom how well, hard it is. As a as a PC as a PC gamer, I think I can speak for like a like a like a good solid group of PC gamers out there. Like we expect we expect console ports to always be kind of kind of substandard uh not saying that they're bad but we we we, we anticipate it you know uh and you know because i'm trying to think of some i'm trying to think of some bad ports from back in the day and i can't think of any besides Look, that one you want, Creed game. you want to talk about bad ports let's let's talk about nintendo switch for a minute <laughs> no, oh I'm my just, god just, yeah, yeah. as someone who runs our nintendo team i have bitten the bullet many times for people so they don't have to <laughs> including Overwatch was the last one. Uh, I saw a friend. I saw a friend trying his damnedest to justify uh, Overwatch on the Switch for me, and I was like, uh, "You, you do know I build computers, and I, I will just get this on on PC, right? You do know this, right?" Yeah. <laughs> so, sorry, I just I pulled an ad. Talked about Nintendo on a non Nintendo oh. show. <laughs> hey, hey, but you, hey, but you talked about it the right way. <laughs> I know. I just like to give Ed a hard time, and then I turned around and did it. <laughs> 
Uh, let's see. Let's I do want to be able to uh, PC. Okay, I can help you out with that. I can, yeah, use, the, I can I, use some tips and pointers. Sweet. And, um, because I've been a console player all my life, so I do want to see what the PC can do. I know I heard that, like, games run smoother and, like, they're more vibrant and whatnot. So I do want to see that up close. So, so I do want to build my own PC. Here's the one thing I'll say for sure. When, when, when games, when games are releasing, when games release and they come out across all the major platforms at the same time, including PC, like that's usually the smoothest launch with the with the least amount of, of problems, except for that one Assassin's Creed game, because that game was just bad on every platform. Which one? Unity, uh, probably. I'm assuming is what. I think it was. I think it was the Unity, the one where where people's faces were missing. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that's I mean, every, like, that's every Assassin's Creed now, but you can you can mm-hmm. see the you can see you can see the base of their skeleton. <laughs> yeah, it's just like this brown texture with some eyeballs and some teeth, and you're like, oh yeah. my gosh, what happened? <laughs> yeah, that was on a uh, glitch episode of uh, I think Watch Mojo. And I was like, that is the ugliest thing I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> yeah, I mean the 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 Batman what well, Batman Arkham Knight was had a had a terrible launch that came across all systems also. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and also, and also, a, one of the Mortal Kombat games. It wasn't one of the main games. It was one of the. It was. Well, was one of the main? It was more. It was Mortal Kombat Ten. Mortal Kombat Ten when it launched, had a well. It it had a bad. It had a bad performance on PC to the point where where Duck Warner Brothers gave people back their money, but eventually fixed it when the um when the when the complete edition came out. Fall Guys had a pretty rough launch. I mean, for being a free game that. You know, they didn't yeah, know exactly how well. I think that was but... a server load thing, not a. Yeah. I don't think. I don't think their like faces were missing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, so let's see. Uh, so Gamescom wrapped up. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and uh, and let's 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 talk about some of the, let's talk about some of the stuff that we saw out there that may have been good and exciting. Uh, let's see. You know what? I'm just going to go down the list as I saw them. So let's talk about Call of Duty. Uh, yeah. Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War trailer. Here now, I will say I will say this as a uh, as a kid as as a kid who grew up in the '80s and stuff like that. It was kind of eerie seeing Ronald Reagan. Oh, do <laughs> it was and like it was it was a decent Ronald Reagan too. Yeah, it was eerie seeing that. <laughs> it looked uh, it looked like Ronald Reagan. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, did it make all the bad decisions like Ronald Reagan? You know, my question. Yeah, I'm not gonna make it political. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We don't know yet. We didn't play the game. <laughs> Spoilers for the Twitter game ever historically accurate. <laughs> Spoilers for 40 years ago. Uh, all right, and uh, let's see. Uh, uh, what uh, did you guys catch anything on Unknown Nine Awakening? I saw a little bit of that. Oh yes, I want to play that. What is? Yeah, there is a. Is was there any gameplay though? Because I, I saw the trailer. It was just it was just a trailer. It was just a trailer. Okay, I want to see some gameplay to that because I see she gets abilities, but I'm curious about what, what those abilities do. So mm-hmm. what what game yeah. is it? Uh, it's called Unknown Nine. Nine Awakening. Oh. Um, let's see. Unknown Nine Awakening. I'm not exactly sure what it's going to be though. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, some people are hoping it's an open world game, and it looks like it could be. Um, this is it was just so weird and kind of like, I think Gamescom was kind of a weird place for it to be at. But hey, go for it, right? Um, okay, uh, and and here's one. Here's one that was that was that wasn't really a shock for people, but it but it was definitely one of those ones that people had their eye on. Uh, Doom Eternal, the Ancient Ones DLC, has been revealed. Yeah, like uh, like that got a that got a hearty that got a, that got a hearty uh, response from from the community. Uh, the oh, go ahead, Logan. Doom Eternal, not a perfect game, but freaking fun. And if you like games where you can just go all out balls to the wall combat, Doom Eternal is a perfect game for you. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, we got the first look trailer, of Dragon Age Four, which which you know what? Okay, Bioware. Listen to me. Listen to me, please. <laughs> D- Dragon Age Four. We have faith in you. We we love you guys. We know that if this is your freaking, if this is your, if, if this is your beauty, this is gonna get you everything you need to get Mass Effect all off the off the launch pad. So please, please 
just hit a home run with Dragon Age 4. We, the gaming community, will support you any way you need it. Just give us, just give the fans what we want. And when you turn around and say Mass Effect, we will be there for you. That's the all I'm going to say. All I'm saying is this game better be good if this is the reason why Anthem sucked. I, I think, I think look, I think. Shots fired. I, think, I love, <laughs> I love Anthem too. Don't get me wrong. I have a whole podcast channel because of Anthem, but like. <laughs> so uh, we had one we had a podcast about anthem 2 it lasted eight episodes so it was a good it was a great it was a gr- it had a great intro music that jesse made it had you know just a, a great color scheme it was awesome we called it javelins for hire that was a great title for the show yeah couldn't well, okay, Land Party started because of uh, Anthem because we were playing Anthem together and we were pretty much doing podcasts while we were playing and we're like, we might as well just actually make this a show, y'all. I I wanted I wanted I wanted to Anthem I wanted Anthem so bad and I was I was I was guaranteed to get it, uh, but just the way the whole it wasn't even it, it's not even Mass Effect Andromeda's fault, but just the way the whole thing kind of fell out the bottom fell out with Mass Effect Andromeda kind of. See, you I know liked how... Ma- I liked Mass Effect Andromeda. I played it about six months after it came out, but I I liked it. Yeah, I played it at launch. I played it at launch, so you know what you. <sighs> See, that's your problem. You didn't wait for all the nice um... facial animations to get into the game. <laughs> See, I played my... it when they. I played it six <laughs> months <laughs> later when they my, finally finished my, it. <laughs> my my face was so tired, <laughs> which is also a line in the film. But my face was so tired of that game. Uh, I, <laughs> but yeah, so it was just, just Mass Effect Andromeda. It was a great game. What I, what I got through, because I just got to a point where I got so fed up every time I turned the game on. I mean, I was playing it every day. Every time I turned the game on, there was a patch. <laughs> so it was just like, uh, you know, I, I, I can't deal with it. And, you know, I, I canceled my pre-order for Anthem and it was, and it was, and it was, a, it was a temper tantrum moment. That's really what it was. Yeah. Because I mean, I, I, I've, I've heard Anthem is, a, was, is, was, are a decent game, you know, but you know, it was just, it's fun mechanically. Like flying is awesome. I think the shooting actually feels pretty decent. It's just like a lot of the mission structure, at least in the first few hours that I played, it was like, shoot all these guys, go to the next place, shoot all these guys, go to the next place, protect this thing while you shoot all these guys. And then the mission was over. And then you got a bunch of guns that like, Okay, I know I'm going to get a bunch of crap for this because I play Destiny and a lot of those guns are just reskins of other guns, but that's what it felt like in Anthem was like (laughs) every single like, oh, this assault rifle looks just like this other assault rifle, except it's green. Um, Actually, actually, I think the main reason why I had this big temper tantrum behind Mass Effect Andromeda that that transferred to Anthem was when I found out that they gutted the Mass Effect team to build Anthem and I was like, Uh, no, why? No, no, why'd you, you shouldn't have told me that, because now it just gives me a completely different way to look at Anthem, which was supposed to be your, 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 your grand opus. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. All right, uh, let's see, so, uh, Sam and Max reboot's coming to VR. Ooh, uh, yeah. How, how do, you know what, here's, how do we feel about VR, because VR, the only, t- the only time I've actually had fun with VR so far has been playing Beat Saber. That sounds like everybody uh, else I've ever tried talked to. VR because I haven't tried VR because I, I sometimes I get vertical, which is weird. And I just found this out when I was playing Covain last year at PAX, and I started playing uh, Dying Light again, and I just got real dizzy. So nine times out of, nine times out of ten, I'm not gonna try VR right now, but eventually I do want to get my hands on VR. Well, VR is supposed to be getting VR is supposed to be getting better because it's supposed to. Uh, I've, uh, there's a reason why people get that get vertigo and 3D motion sickness from playing VR, and it has something to do of how how close the actual like view lens is to your eyes. Like your uh, like your like your like your brain your brain kind of calibrates. You know that if it's this close to your face, then that means it's right there, and and your and your brain and your and your motor neurons are always trying to just like get you on sure footing and stuff like that. Uh, I also suffer from that 3D motion sickness. As a matter of fact, like I got I got crippling 3D motion sickness playing Resident Evil 4 when it released on the GameCube and thank God the ports that have come out since then have have it was because of the camera control. The camera control is so tight that you know like when and you know they still had that quick turn mechanic in the game. So when you when you quick turn like that that thing like whipped around and it was like, you know, even if you're sitting in your chair, it's like you get whiplash and stuff like that. So 
I feel your pain on that, and that's why, like I said, like Beat Saber is about the only VR game I've been able to play. You know, and number one, not look like an, not look like an idiot. You know, yeah, but also, but also not have that that three D. I don't know. Like, I that bet 3D... if somebody filmed you playing Beat Saber, you'd probably look like a flailing idiot. <laughs> <laughs> There's some video of me playing Beat Saber and like and you, you know like there's, there's certain you know like there's certain there's certain parts where like you have to like like stoop down real low so yeah like yeah if you want to see if you want to see like perfect squat form you know like that whole that whole butt to the ground like type type of squat yeah watch me play some Beat Saber. <laughs> you like I got it a lot. <laughs> this show has gotten so weird and like you know. I'm glad to I'm glad to see the show has found its its you know its place in the. <laughs> we're, we're just we're just for fetishes, okay? That's, that's... Uh... Shout out to Corey, uh... our boss. Oh, man, I don't even know what's happening right now. We yeah, have a, we, right. we have we, we have a, we have a private chat that doesn't include Corey, so we kind of we kind of like hey Corey's coming. We we got to do this. <laughs> I I wouldn't doubt it. Probably true. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, release date was announced for War of the Warcraft Shadowlands. Uh, coming October 27th. Uh, let's see. Uh, Warhammer Age of Sigmar. Age of Sigmar Stormground re- was revealed also. Uh, and here's one that here's one that was was kind of not so shocking. Crash Bandicoot 4. It's about time. The flashback tapes revealed. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm excited. Yeah, were, were, were we ready for Crash? Because I was kind of ready for Crash, given the given the treatment that he's gotten in the last couple of years of all with the 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 insane trilogy, and then Crash Team Racing came back. Um, they you know they've been they for a while they've been fumbling around with like just like party games and stuff like that. You yeah. know, just kind of Crash kinda Bash. The yeah, bring that back. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> where's our racing back? No, where's our where's our Crash Bash remake? Oh, you know. Uh... Make it better though. What what year is it though when we're getting ready to play a new crash game and we've got Tony Hawk coming back? I know. I I, I know. This is like I mean it's twenty twenty, so anything can happen at this point. I feel like we might get sucked into video games. <laughs> hey, I feel like I feel like it's the return of PlayStation One all over again. That's like just bring back yeah. my. Where is my ape escape, you cowards? <laughs> yeah, give me real. my freaking Final Fantasy Tactics remastered. <laughs> yeah, can we please get Final Fantasy Tactics? Like, yeah. I look the you know Game Boy what? Advance I'm games were fine. Look, it's stuck. Final, Final Fantasy just... Tactics is stuck on the PlayStation One, and it's stuck on the PSP. Give me some Final Fantasy Tactics. Okay, all well these, you can play it on iPad. <laughs> Who plays all these freaking i these freaking Final Fantasy games? They keep re-releasing, and they they're just too cowardly to put Final Fantasy Tactics out there because they know it will smash all these other records. Look, if they can remaster Final Fantasy VIII, they can remaster Final Fantasy Tactics. Okay, Final Fantasy. Okay, you know what? Here's my here's my at me on Twitter for the night. Final Fantasy VIII is the worst Final Fantasy game. Uh, I agree with that. I don't like it. You guys. <laughs> Y'all want to have a y'all want to have a conversation at me on Twitter. I'll give you my handle at the end of the show. Is it the junction system? Oh my god! Is it, it wasn't. It... Okay, here's here's my problem. Here's one of my main problems. Is it because uh, the sword I... is actually a gun? Well, that's one. That's one. <laughs> uh, but uh, but one of the main one of the main things is like that. In my opinion, that game was a little too emo for me. I, mean, it, I, think, it, it, you, I feel like they just tried to recapture Final Fantasy VII. And I they like just, emo. Well, they, well, they did. Well, they did try to capture. Or they did try to capture Final Fantasy VII again, but at the same time, they were like, they're like, oh, it's it's all about heart, and it's like, uh, it, so basically, you have this guy who's you have this guy who's like who's like. Uh, like the mid twenties version of Leonardo DiCaprio with this crazy freaking sword that's supposed to be a gun, or or vice versa, you know, whichever um, way you look at it. Gun blade, so. sir. <laughs> uh, are we talking squall or are we talking cypher i forgot <laughs> oh look at the rage in the, in the chat yes. i know <laughs> okay uh <laughs> but, uh, you but, have like enemies but, now 
But essentially, yeah, that's why I was like, at me on Twitter. I'll give you the handle in a little while. But uh, but here's but here's basically my synopsis of uh, Final Fantasy VII. Uh, Final Fantasy VIII, I'm sorry. Final Fantasy VIII. Like, don't uh, you dare talk crap on our Lord and Savior Final Fantasy VII. <laughs> oh, no, no. Like, I, I wouldn't listen to any of Boss Rush's back catalog, Ben Logan. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, well, it's a great but, time to announce that I'm going strictly back to land party later. <laughs> <laughs> but basically, you know, you have this you have this basically extinction level event happening. But I saw I saw this girl. I saw this girl at the at the dance one night. And, and oh, God, she's on my team now. But we have to save the world. And there's this crazy sorceress chick that's causing calamity. But I got to talk to that girl. And that's basically how that game felt to me. And, like you know, it's like. <laughs> I feel like I feel like Final Fantasy X recycled Final Fantasy VIII's plot a lot better than Final Fantasy VIII tried with his own plot. <laughs> That's fair. I like Final Fantasy X, but I also like Final Fantasy VIII. So, um, okay. I mean, that... I like eight, ten, and ten too. So, <laughs> uh, I I still think nine is my favorite, but it's just me. All right. Uh, let's see. So let's see. Tear down. Uh, that that game kind of like stuck out at me. But what did you guys think of it? It was it it, it seemed interesting, but yeah. you sure. guys have. Yeah. <laughs> That's kind of where I thought it was like okay. This kind of yeah. seems like a knockoff of, of some other stuff. I mean, eh. yeah. Uh, there is one game. There is one game that got revealed, but we're going to talk about that a little bit later. Because uh, because that's an that's a Nelly topic actually. Yeah, we're, there, yeah, yeah we're gonna, we'll talk about it a little bit later. But WWE 2K Battlegrounds uh, gameplay trailer was revealed. Hey, yes, y'all. <laughs> game looks no. so bad. No, it game looks oh, so bad. Uh, it looks so bad, but it's a game that I'll be playing immediately. <laughs> uh, we should, Logan. We should talk about adding that game to a roster of something that we're. Later. I thought about that. I actually thought about doing the whole thing. Yeah. In Battle- because it's a cheap enough game that everybody can get it. Yeah. And the commentary could be amazing. <laughs> I know. It would be awesome. Oh my god. The the, the, the Twitch chat is falling apart right now based off of my based off of my uh, dialogue on Final Fantasy VIII. Like uh, like we got we we got cool. someone go we got someone going hardcore saying saying it's nine, it's eight, it's seven. I mean it's nine, it's eight, it's ten, all okay. greater than seven. There's no reason I like that person. Five that person can stay. seven. <laughs> Another one of my friends. That person could <laughs> say. That, that's my homie, too. <laughs> Shout out to Dire Corpse. <laughs> oh, oh, so you brought your groupies tonight. I get it. You brought your groupies tonight. I did, actually. <laughs> the I wish I had groupies. I just have one you know, angry social media manager that yells yeah. at me all the time. You got Ed. Ed's there somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> That's... If I thirst, if I if I thirst trap on Twitter, like you know, like forty five minutes before we go live, well, I'll have groupies on 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 the chat too, you know. But that'd be yeah, great. Man, you should start do it, doing that. Do thirst trap, it has to be in the bar. We should start doing it. Like we bring our crew. <laughs> well, Ron, you'll get a race. Speaking of, there's a thirst trap challenge going on on Twitter right now. It's called Thirst Trap RPG, and basically, there's like it's supposed to be a theme, like based off of RPG stuff, but it's it's already gone. You know. Uh, to infinity and beyond. Let's put it that way. <laughs> All right, we got a few more oh, games. Will, you you just so ruined Toy right Story right. for me. <laughs> uh, let's see. We got a few more games here. Let's see. Star Wars Squadrons. Okay, I got my eye on that one. I have my eye on that one. I I know it's going to give Nelly. You and I are going to have that bad 3D motion sickness if we play this game. But I'm all for it. Yeah. This game I looks mean, absolutely incredible. I, ooh, I haven't played a Star Wars game in a good minute, though. So yeah, I do well, want to check this one out. Well, this one, well, this one's zeroing more on flight combat. Ooh, I, was it Rogue it's Squadron like, like that for the 64? Yeah, it's like, yeah, yeah, it's it's like first yeah. person Rogue Squadron. Yeah. yeah. That, that was my game. Uh, let's see. Uh, there's a Warframe. There's a Warframe Hearts of Demos expansion is coming out. You know, you know. I just, I just gotta say it because you know, there's gonna be one person that's listening to the podcast. He didn't say anything about Warframe. <laughs> Another reason. <laughs> uh, Warframe's pretty well. interesting. I played a little bit of it, but I had no idea what it was trying to do, so I deleted it. Well, I mean, I mean, well, let's let's see. Uh, Warframe versus Godfall. Which you know, which one? You know. Ooh. Right. Right, no. right. Okay. Question. Okay. 
uh, another That's a no for another, me, LeBron. No. <laughs> Another expansion of Sims 4 is coming soon. Uh, Mafia, the Definitive Edition Story whoa, Trilogy. Whoa, whoa, you just kind of oh. skimmed over the Sims thing. Okay. Hey, they got Star Wars coming, yo. This is the first time I've been interested in the Sims in like 20 years, okay? <laughs> okay, like, my, my, my bad, my, my bad. Hey, look, Sports, they're adding... The they're adding... <laughs> They're adding... They are adding Star Wars to the Sims. They're adding the... Not only are they adding Star Wars, they're adding the, the Disney theme park area to the sims which is like that's that's all i want in life like we were talking about this on on the xbox show the other day the only thing i want in this world in this world is a like a a disney theme park themed roller coaster tycoon and this is probably the closest Mm. i'm ever gonna get to that so yeah (laughs) my bad well that's actually arriving september 8th for ps4 xbox one and the pc (laughs) <laughs> and uh, and you will see a lot of familiar faces, including Rey from the latest Star Wars trilogy. She she will be featured in that as a uh, as a main character in the trailer. Yeah, Heck yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. I like your celebration dance, Logan. <laughs> Black guys right. have like two options. You either do the Kevin Smith, yep, you know, from Hitch. You stay there. You stay there, or you know, you do the but, weird. As long as not everything jiggles, you're good. <laughs> But if we're gonna if we're gonna continue talking about Star Wars, the Lego uh, Star Wars Skywalker saga got delayed. Uh, that was that was that That's was not a shocker though. <laughs> nobody's nobody's gonna even gonna care about Star Wars by the time that game comes out. No offense, Star Wars fans. Okay, but I, I get it that Disney makes a ton of money off Star Wars, but at the same time, why do they overload it? Like we haven't had Star Wars since what Fallen Order last year. Yeah, Fallen Order was really good. It was great, but like there's. You're going to wait almost a year, and then you're going to overload it with Squadrons, which is going to be a great game. I can't wait for that. But then you're going to give us the Batu stuff. Then you're going to give us this. It's like, come on, space this stuff out a little bit. Well, right. EA's I, I, got I to get a certain agree. amount of Star Wars stuff out before they lose the license. That's Yeah. True. Yeah, because uh, because you don't want to piss off Mickey Mouse. You don't want to piss off the mouse. I saw that South Park uh, episode. It's my money. I know what happens, <laughs> I know what happens to the Jonas Brothers because they wouldn't wear their purity rings. <laughs> <laughs> okay 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 cory went there first right just well, i'm making sure he went there first, yeah right? yeah he, he he went over there first i mean <laughs> am i wrong i saw mickey no. mouse beat up the jonas brothers <laughs> that was a real thing that happened it's uh, on tape uh, and this is what yeah. and, and, and this is why we had bella thorne selling 200 dollars oh. swimsuit picks <laughs> yeah, she beat the mouse I wonder if Mickey or Mouse never made her do that. Never mind, I can't make that joke. <laughs> That's Same actually. The actors. I wonder how the much. Show. I wonder how much. I wonder how much Disney has invested in OnlyFans. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh. oh you want to see me take off my? <laughs> that's where they. <laughs> That, that's, where they, that's, where they, that's where they send all the, the Disney actresses that have no talent after they turn 18. <laughs> so. That's where they take all the Disney Channel original ones after they get done with High School Musical, like, five. <laughs> well, I mean, hey, I Vanessa mean... and Hutchins, we know this was going to happen with Zac Efron anyway, so might as well get paid to do it. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you guys. You guys thought Nickelodeon was uh, was mean with their whole nobody over 16. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I guess we know who was running Nickelodeon. Uh, oh. they're, they're all in jail now. Uh, okay. Um, no, he, did, he did kill himself. Never mind. Sorry. <laughs> they all got arrested for sex trafficking. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Wait, 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 wait. We're talking about the small little crew? I don't know what we're talking about anymore. <laughs> we started with feet. We ended we were with talking about is... Star Wars. So hey, now we're talking about sex cults. Wait, wait how'd, how'd this happen? I don't know. I watched Buffy. I believe it. <laughs> <laughs> season two of season two of Fall Guys was announced. <laughs> uh, I couldn't even wait. do it. I couldn't even do it. I couldn't even do it. Wait, you skipped the whole mafia. <laughs> I was getting back. I was going to get back to it. I promise. I was going to get. Back. <laughs> you know, this we'll get back. To one of the best game. games that I am looking forward to, man. <laughs> That's the other thing. That's the other thing to the show is we'll get back to it. <laughs> And we oh, end up no. back in feet. Uh, 
Uh, okay, so Mafia, the definitive edition story trailer was revealed over there. Uh, um, uh, there's no date for that as, yet, as of yet, is there? I think it comes out in September. Um, actually, is that September actually, title? Is that is that, that, you, that close? Mm-hmm. If you go on a PlayStation store, they actually have it on, I think, up for sale. It's part of the well, trilogy. Is- it's part of the trilogy uh, that's already for okay. sale, then you just get it. But, uh... Man, now I gotta look it up because now I don't know. Yeah, I'm looking it up too. Okay, September 25th. Right. Oh okay. wow, yeah. that's crazy! Like all these games, like right around the corner. Same day as Kingdoms of Amalur Re Reckoning, which I am all for. Okay, I'm now we're going for Mafia. <laughs> now can we talk about how how so early the the season two announcement for Fall Guys hey. was? But it needs to happen, though. I mean, this is a game that people are binge playing, and it does get kind of yeah. boring after you play like four hours in a row on the same like five maps. So, oh yeah, hey, yeah. we're getting medieval. We're getting new costumes. Heck yeah, I love this. And if this hey. is how seasons are going to go for him, absolutely. I'm, hey, I'm not honestly. I'm not knocking the hustle. Like when I heard that season two was announced, I was like, go them because like this game. This game had a phenomenal launch. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah also, so- they said it's not coming to other consoles yet either, which is big for playstation you know like that's i think that's a big win for them yeah because this to me this totally screams like something xbox was probably trying to get on game pass at some point and oh absolutely and Mm. sony probably made them a better deal you know to keep it exclusive for a long time and then nintendo has no online so it's not going there all right uh let's see uh hold on hold on hold on you you got tetris 99 there's some online there man you know, Tetris is a great game. That's that's that was that was the statement. <laughs> okay, that's like hey, you know what? I if I want to look at screenshots of Super Smash Brothers, I can go online. I don't need to join an online match. I can just go on you the know internet. What? And look you know them what? Up. You know what? That's that's true. You know what? Invite me to Power Block one day so I can talk about how Nintendo just has a Nintendo Fi everything, everything. Mm-hmm. Like, like, why? Like, why is use uh, your phone why, to talk to people? What? Nobody does that. <laughs> what? <laughs> Nobody does that like, in real life. <laughs> like, why was Bayonetta wearing Samus's suit in the first game? Why? Why? Why did we even need that? Like, no, Bayonetta looks great. How she is? I we had we this that. we had this conversation. <laughs> Thank <on>, you. <laughs> we had this conversation on Pal Block last night too. Is I, as soon as Bayonetta three gets published, I guarantee you, Bayonetta two will be somewhere else. Will be somewhere. Yes. Yeah. I agree I, with that. I think uh, Platinum is going, going to self... Sorry, I know we're talking about Gamescom, but Bayonetta is very important. Uh, oh, yeah, for real. I think um, Nintendo has paid for the publishing, and like that exclusivity will run out in about a year, uh, and you're going to see what happened with Wonderful 101, where Platinum's probably going to uh, self-publish it, maybe crowdfund it to get it to other platforms, maybe even running at a... 120 frames a second on on Maybe. next gen, you know, 4K 120. Mm-hmm. Bayonetta would probably be really nice instead of 720p. It's one of the it's one of the things that always that that always. I mean, it it wasn't that big of a head scratcher for me, but when Bayonetta 2 was announced, that was going to be exclusive to Nintendo Switch. I was just like, wait. It's funny because that's actually a deal they made with Sega because Sega still owns the. Ha- they don't own the publishing rights, but they have like a, a stake in that franchise. And yeah. then Nintendo just straight up took three, right? Because Sega was invested into, but they needed a publishing partner to help p- get the budget high enough to mm-hmm. actually make the game. And Nintendo said they would publish it, which, wow, on the Wii U, that was just a bad decision. Uh, but, wow, everybody just disappeared. Okay. Uh, we're, here. we're here. We're still here. Okay. I'm here. Yeah, we still here. Okay. Uh, and then you know they they ended up turning that into a two game deal with three, uh, and now Astral Chain is probably the same way, right? Like Nintendo published that first game, but I I bet a second and third Astral Chain will happen on other consoles. Which Astral Chain, in my opinion, was a really good game. I don't understand. I don't understand why the uh, why when um what was it when when games award when when the game when the game awards happened last year. Uh, like I don't understand all the hate that was being thrown to it just because it was a Nintendo exclusive. Because I actually liked it, mm-hmm. uh, and I didn't really, I didn't, didn't really have a problem with it being on the Switch. As a matter of fact, a lot of people don't game. like a lot of people don't like third party Nintendo exclusives because they know third party games don't really sell on the Switch, and it's just like a 
questionable thing of like, why would you do that? You know, uh, yeah. as somebody, as somebody who frequently buys third party games on switch, it's, uh, I can say safely that is not the optimal way to play most of these games. Uh, mm-hmm. yeah, that's, that's for real. Uh, uh, so yeah, so once again, uh, cr- uh, Crossroads with a, with a small bit of power blocking it. Oh well, <laughs> hey, uh, it, it, it dollar it dollar in the the Nintendo Square Jar, I guess. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, Age of Empires Three Definitive Edition uh, release date oh. was announced for October the fifteenth. Uh, via uh, is launching on on Steam and the uh, Microsoft Store. Uh. Wastelanders Liberty. We have anything to say about that? Uh, the gameplay. Tr- uh, the oh, act, wait, was a character trailer or a gameplay trailer? I'm, I'm confused. It was gameplay. It was gameplay. Okay. Uh, how how would you guys think of that? It, it, <laughs> it's it's looks fun, you know. Uh, I think we. Sure. I think it's on Game Pass. <laughs> honestly, like I think. It's a backlog game for me. Yeah. Now, we'll say that. Now here's one now here's one that hit me as here's one that hit me as odd. Uh Medal of Honor is coming back, but it's but it's a but it's a uh VR. It's, it's game? VR? Yeah. Yeah. That, but that kinda hit me as odd. But Respawn is making it. Which gives me hope. Which you hope yeah. The the problem with Medal of Honor right now is okay, think of when Medal of Honor was really popular. There wasn't a ton of games like it yet. Call of Duty wasn't as nearly what it is now. Right. And there's not a market like it's an oversaturated market as it is. Um, maybe there's a chance it can make it happen, and I like the the risk of doing it as VR. If you think if it does well in VR, they might bring it to just regular, bring it, but bring it back to mainstream. Yeah, bring it back to mainstream. But it's Metal of Iron Man. It's it's been a long time, so it's I think it's a risk. Yeah, but I think I think it. VR needs some games that will take risks, you know, because like, I mean, yeah, as as great as, you know, VR is selling for PlayStation, at least like still that attach rate is is small. It's usually like the games that are on sale. You see the same games on their top 10 uh, VR list all the time. It's usually like Job Simulator and Beat Saber and that kind of stuff. Like, I think bringing something, you know, Half-Life Alex was like the first quote unquote major triple a full-fledged gaming experience and i think if they can, if somebody else can break that mold and kind of just get in there even if it's just a mediocre experience that you know doesn't make people sick i think people will latch onto it and say i think that's the start of something you know uh so i i kind of actually have faith in respawn to make this game uh something it, if not great at least interesting in the vr space yeah. I, I I completely agree. I completely agree. All right, so uh, so I know I know this made Corey light up. Uh, let's talk about that Destiny Two Beyond Light. Yeah, let's let's talk about that. <laughs> uh, but you know, by the way, like I, Christmas time I, I, all over. <laughs> I just gotta say that was a you know what? Here's the one thing I will say: like the Destiny trailers always just blow me away. Like uh, like I haven't really spent any uh-huh. real time in, in, on that game, but the Destiny trailers always blow me away. That that was freaking. That was just gorgeous, what yeah. I saw. Like, they, a lot of people always say, like, oh, that was a great CD tra- trailer, but or a CG trailer, cinematic trailer, but where's the gameplay? I think Bungie has always done this unique thing where they actually make their gameplay trailers feel cinematic in a way, and it mm-hmm. actually right. makes the game look, I mean, I love Destiny, but the trailers always make the game look way better than it you know, yeah. is in a, in a respect, <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? I'm not, I'm not trying to say that yeah. in like a derogatory way or anything, but like the, the trailers always look great. The music always hits at the right time. The story beats always hit at the right time. And these powers, you know, if you want to hear a deep dive, you can listen to tower casuals on this. Cause we talked about it for an hour and 40 minutes last week. Uh, but it's, uh, definitely, something I'm really looking forward to. I think the ice powers look unique. I think they're going to break the game in a unique way. Uh, the just freezing the enemies or building these ice walls or building platforms. Even some of the characters can just build ice platforms. It's, it's, it's going to be fun to actually get a new subclass. This is the first time we've gotten a new subclass since the taking King. So, um, um it's going to be fun. Oh, Okay, I'm sorry. I, I I don't mean to I don't mean to break to break our whole thought train here. Even though I know that's that's been a whole thing tonight, but uh, I just I just made 50 followers on on Twitch. 
I, I don't know how to act right now. <laughs> I'm just trying. Well, congratulations. Nice. I'm about to go see. <laughs> Unfollow. <laughs> just kidding. I've been trying to I've, I've been trying to work on that whole affiliate thing for God knows how long. It, it didn't take me as long as it took some people, but man, just seeing that notification, I just got my 50th follower. Woo! Okay. Woo! Congratulations. Congratulations. Proud of you. You can do your dance, bye. You too. All right, all right. All right, we can we we now go back to our rarely scheduled Destiny 2 event. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't I don't really have anything else to say about it. It's it's it, I've talked to death about it. If you if you do want a deep dive though, you should check out Tower Casuals, the Destiny podcast. Uh, we did talk about it for an hour and forty eight minutes last week. So. <laughs> I, I that's all I was waiting for. I was waiting for the plug. That's yeah. all I was waiting for. Our four, <laughs> our our we set out to make a thirty to forty minute show, and the last three episodes have been over an hour and a half. So. Jesus. <laughs> it's a good time. <laughs> Jesus. All right. And uh and to round and to round everything off, we got another look at Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. Oh which, god, yes. Which I'm just gonna say right now is that's one of my go to titles for PS5. That is one of my go to titles. I almost want to take back something I said last week where I thought Miles Morales is gonna be the launch game. The more I see of Ratchet and Clank, the more I'm thinking this is the launch title. Oh man. I, because I don't we know. got seven minutes. We got we got about seven minutes at the PS5 event, right? And then we got another seven minutes here. That is some seriously long gameplay for a game that I'm not saying a month difference could could be the whole thing, but like this this would be a great game to launch launch the PS5 with, and right? Right, and propel it into the holiday. Yeah, season. I agree. Well, it's actually, you know agree. what? That would be actually that would be great. Everything. Yeah, it yeah. showcases so much of the best features of the PS5. It's like. The more I look at it, the more it's like the fact that we haven't even gotten gameplay yet of Spider-Man Miles Morales mm -hmm. is the only reason I'm starting to hesitate on that. And yeah. I'm thinking, like, man, Ratchet and Clank's ready to go. Let's do it. I, I you know, I feel this. I, I feel like this now because now as you've said that, the more I think about it now, like if Ratchet and Clank is a launch title, then it becomes the perfect holiday title because they will drop it down to 40 bucks. And that's exactly. guaranteed. And that's a guaranteed sell through for the new systems, especially if it's a holiday system for a younger person. Mm. And then you could even you could even do this where, OK, Ratchet and Clank comes out with a regular PS5. Right. And then Miles Morales, you throw in a Miles Morales controller. Yes. Show the customization option. So you launch with your base model. You launch with, hey, this is the white new dual sense. It's going to be awesome. And then it's like, hey, here's the customized version and ah oh, man, the more I think about that, it's like yeah, that that's a total Sony move. Right oh there. man, oh man, <laughs> these are exciting times we live in. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. Uh, did we want to did we want to wrap up on any of these games? Uh, because our next segment is going to be on Fall Guys. Do we want to wrap up anything else on these the games? The only little thing I want to say there was on Squadrons. The fact that we got more of a look at what that campaign looks like. Yes. I, that game. The more I look at it, I thought it was going to be rushed. I really did. The more I see that game, it's like, dude, this could be the game for Star Wars. I mean, Fallen Order was phenomenal last year. I mean, especially if you like Dark Souls games like I do, um, Fallen Order was a perfect addition. Squadrons has that little bit of a nostalgia where I played the N64 version, and I love that. But now you're having this fight on both sides, and there's a unique story there. I mean, this could be a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, so... Now we've got now we've gotten the big behemoth of the, of the news drop out of the way. Let's go ahead and talk about the uh, the uh, the Fall Guys Ultimate Knockout Season Two. Medieval, I hear. Going medieval on your ass. Yeah, it is going to be medieval. I was reading it. I yeah, mean, I think that's going to be real interesting. <laughs> Give me a dragon costume, yo. Yeah, so another collection I'm of wizard costumes. Let me that's let it. me get that dragon costume with a big tail that you can knock people off with. <laughs> But it also like it also makes your character feel like weighted different, so like you could fall off, you know. Like it, it's just saying it'd be hilarious. So yeah, yeah. I hope so, you uh, can make people disappear <laughs> if you're a wizard. So so Devolver Digital and Media Tonic. I feel like I, I I feel like they're they're just they're just striking striking gold on this one. Yeah. yeah. When's the Witcher crossover going to happen? That's what I want. Well, didn't they already say they're doing a cyberpunk one? <laughs> they're doing it. Yeah, they yeah yes. The cyberpunk one. They, they said the Witcher was on their wish list. I don't know if they ever worked out a deal yet. 
There's where your cyber your cyberpunk series gonna show up. This is Fall Guys costume. <laughs> Everybody wants that cyberpunk series so bad, and, it, and that's, this is where it's going to show up. And everybody's going to be, everybody's going to be pissed at first, and then they're just going to be like, five bucks, please, thanks." And then you just see a bunch of cyberpunk series running around. And you're like, "Oh, well, I'm I'm the banana still." So, uh, uh, Paul Guys just needs to keep adding in more levels and and get more variety in there because it's such a fun game, but it is repetitive. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think, I don't think they were expecting it to be this successful, though. I, I bet in the next season you'll see more games, you'll see more, uh, you know, just different types of things going on in that game that you didn't expect. It's, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I think that game's going to evolve faster than you think it is, just because I they were way more successful than they thought they were going to be. Oh yeah. So, that's just my guess. All right. Yeah, you see the servers crash. That's why I actually didn't get the game. I was like, let me wait for the servers to get better and then maybe try it. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, when I heard the servers crashing, it wasn't even like a like a like a like a like a ha ha like type thing right there. I was like, the servers crashed. That mean man, there was a whole bunch of people ready to play this game. It's it's funny too because like when I saw the uh, when I saw the the initial trailer for Fall Guys before the game actually launched, I was like, mm, okay. Party game, you know, whatever, you know, not my stick. And then, you know, find out that, you know, the server was dying because everybody was just trying to get into it. It's like, man, like, what's what is the deal here? Did I, did I just miss out on something? <laughs> yeah, I, I I almost missed the download because, like, I I'm not going to lie, I primarily play on Xbox and, and Switch, but I do play a lot of the exclusives on PlayStation. And, like, I don't know, I just... For, almost forgot to download this game and I, I actually just did it the other day and I was really glad that I did because it's it's, it's so awesome. much fun yeah so much fun and like it it has it kind of has a little bit of that Call of Duty rage where like you're so mad where you're like ask you what I need another game I need another game let's get this fixed yeah we can be better yeah so all right so Let's talk about let's talk about PS Five and uh, and pre orders and speculation. Oh jeez. <laughs> okay, so here's my okay because I don't know if I comprehend this right. You put your registration in, which right. saves you a spot for your PS Five, right? No, yes, so it it gets you in line to be able to pre order one before anybody else. Yeah. Uh, see, I know I had Raider. <laughs> Yeah, ba- so basically, it's kind of like a lottery, uh, yeah. in in a sense. It's kind of like a lottery in a sense. Uh, uh, PlayStation Five is launching later this holiday season, but we're still missing some key info about the console itself, such as the price points, the release dates. Um, we don't even know. We technically we're, we're don't two even... months out, people. <laughs> you think it, you think it's two months? I we, mm-hmm. I mean, well, no. uh, just, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. If, if we go, we if, think if, it's if, around two months out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, if we go, if we go, the trends of uh of the last couple of PlayStation releases. Yeah, it would it would line up for November. It would. Right. Um, uh, shoot, we don't even have. We have information about the DualSense controller, but we don't even know the price of the controller just yet either. Like, uh, like I mean, well, we know we know right now Nintendo is like the king of like you know the most expensive controllers on the market, and I'm talking like first party controllers. I'm not even talking about like extended controllers, like like our pro controllers for the other systems and stuff like that. Uh, we don't even know how much the controller is going to cost and stuff like that. So it's it's kind of weird. Uh, I just uh, if you guys out there in Twitch land that are just now hearing about, I just put the link up for uh, for Sony's uh, pre order campaign. If you guys are want to take a chance and, and put your name on the list for it. Put your name uh, on the list. Yeah, according to the um, according to the uh, FAQ page. The selection is based on previous interest in, in, in PlayStation activity, so chances are I'm probably not going to get in because uh, they're going to be like, that guy, he stopped playing as soon as Monster Hunter came out on PC. <laughs> Forget that guy. <laughs> and then you, and you'll know if you're selected when you're contacted via email. Now, the thing is, though, like when you use your email, like they're encouraging you to use the email that's uh, associated with your PSN ID. Mm-hmm. So... My PSN, my PSN IDs uh, email. I had to actually like go and look it up online because I was like, uh, that's not that's not the one I use now, <laughs> and stuff like that. Uh, if you're contacted though, you'll have a limited time to make a reservation to pre-order. So you, so number one, you have to act fast and get on the list, and then number two, there's an expiration date and a time that your reservation uh, that your reservation will be indicated via email. 
So just to put it out there, <clears throat> the full pre-order quantity goes uh, one PS5 console or the or digital edition. So the, uh, they're calling the, right now they're calling the console just the the actual system that comes with the disc, and then you got the digital edition itself. Uh, you can pre-order up to uh, two wireless controllers or two tri- uh, two charging stations for dual sense controllers uh two of the headsets the pulse 3d wireless headsets which i gotta read some more information about that uh you can get you can also pre-order two media remotes as well as two hd cameras now why two hd cameras um streamers one for your face and one for your feet. Uh, don't don't i was about to say yeah i was just about to say your feet yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what that, that's, that's how you gonna, circle back everybody <laughs> that's why i'm never gonna make any money on the that's... internet because <laughs> oh, i don't think about stuff like this i'm i'm never gonna get rich off the internet <laughs> not with that no. attitude not with that shirt on <laughs> oh my god <laughs> not without that only fans account <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Should I? Should it have been? We gonna hook wet? you up. We gonna hook you up. Just imagine oh, the PC yeah. muscle on OnlyFans, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. Myself, and I get a five percent royalty yeah, every get, time. Getting your OnlyFans account ready. <laughs> I, you know, you know, Megan facepalm so hard. I actually felt it through my headset. <laughs> Yeah. Right. I mean, hey, if, if she's if she's doing social media, like this could be the thing. This could be the next big platform. <laughs> Schedule yeah. posts on. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Twitch. We're waiting for Hootsuite to add OnlyFans to her yeah. account. <laughs> Twitch, the final frontier. Oh God. <laughs> All right. I feel like we're gonna take another shower. His speech, this his, his speech is called "Stepping on the PC Gamer." <laughs> Logan, oh my god, where are you getting these from tonight? Oh, dude, I'm where are you getting these from tonight? You are on the roll right now. <laughs> Corey, Corey, he's coming, he's coming for your crown, Corey. Uh, you know what? It's it, to be fair, it's probably there. Might be another show that I'm, that I'm working on where I'm trying a... to come up with jokes on a regular basis and get anyway. So it's like, look, my crown is more like a brown paper bag or like one of those folding fold up ones you got from Burger King when you were in the kids' club. <laughs> In the eighties, so uh, there's probably some oh. grease pockets and some holes on there, but if you want it, uh, okay. So spicy nuggets are so only a dollar, everybody. That's all. That's all the news. Like we made through. We made through news events. Uh, pretty, pretty, pretty intact. Did we take an hour and ten minutes? <laughs> Okay, so so we were this so is we're, behind the scenes. We were oh throwing, man, if this was we were, we're, if this was if this is the type of behavior that happened on Nintendo Power Block, that show would have ended like three years this ago. Is, this is really why we need Brody though, because he was he was the serious one. I know. <laughs> Brody, you know Brody, listening to this, buddy. We need you so badly. Help. 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 <laughs> Oh man. oh man! Oh man! Oh man! Oh god! We're gonna get we're gonna get so reprimanded when the show's over. <laughs> uh, not by me. This is fun. <laughs> I just oh, god, I man. could just I can't wait for like Ed's message in the group chat when this goes live and he actually listens oh. to the whole thing. He's like, "What was that mess of a show you guys just did?" I'll be like, <laughs> "Happened." It's a slow news week, people. The funny thing is, it really wasn't though. It really, <laughs> really was. Wa- yeah, it really wasn't. I mean, I mean, like with all this anticipation for the PS5 coming out and everything, like there's like 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 some news. Some news might as well be all good news, in, in my yeah. opinion. Uh, so uh, so yeah. So let's go ahead and let's get let's get started on a big topic because we thought about this one all week and uh, and we want to we want to we want some in, uh, some interaction with the audiences uh, with this one as well. Uh, so the big topic is. Uh, Sony is looking to make some moves and just uh, start snatching up a bunch of studios, just like what Microsoft has been doing as of late. So, to the panel, what what studios should Sony buy next? What do you guys think? And also, uh, chat with us out there on Twitch if you're watching. I have a I have two right off the bat. 
I think. Okay. Actually, I I have three, but I think one of them's way too big for them to actually pursue. Uh, I think Blue Point is a studio they should absolutely acquire, uh, just mm-hmm. because they're so great at their remasters and working with Sony IP and making them feel like you know the Shadow of the Colossus remake was amazing. The Uncharted trilogy felt way better than the original yes. trilogy. Uh, you know. Fun fact, they actually made the Xbox 360 version of Titanfall, which is the version of Titanfall that I played. And it was like, that's when Blue Point sold me was that Titanfall port. And like playing, playing uh, uh, Shadow of the Colossus and playing uh, the Uncharted trilogy. And now with the Demon Souls uh, remake coming, like, I think Blue Point is absolutely a studio that Sony should snatch up. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Oh, uh, what were you gonna say, Leron? Oh, I was just I was just gonna go through their, just go down their um down through their repertoire real fast. They did the God of War collection on PS3, mm-hmm. uh, Ico and Shadow Colossus collection. They did the Metal Gear Solid HD collection. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, let's see, as a as a as an original title, PlayStation All Stars Battle Royale, uh, Titanfall, uh, Flower was one of their games too. Uh, yes, you did. Uh, as you mentioned, the uh, Nathan Drake collection, uh, the remaster for Gravity Rush. You know that was a that was a wonderful port mm-hmm. that they yeah. got because you know I I I I, I about beat my Vita to death playing that game. So when it came out on PS4, I was like, yes, one more time. <laughs> I love Gravity Rush. I I wish that game got more love than it did. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was. It's one of those things like because uh, we spoke about it. We spoke about it. Uh, well, we spoke about how. Sony can be really gimmicky with their stuff, and Gravity Rush. Uh, Gravity Rush. It was just a straight game that wasn't doing the gyrometer controls on the Vita. I think it would have actually gotten a lot more, gotten a lot more push than it did, which is why I was glad when it actually came to the PS4, and it and it kind of like threw that stuff by the wayside. It was like it's there if you want it with a tilt motion on the controller, but you don't have to use it. Yeah, definitely uh, an underrated game a series for sure. Because two was yeah. actually really good too. Yeah. Uh, but the other one, the other one, I, well, the other two, I guess the other one, uh, I think, I don't think it's going to happen because I think they have really shown interest in self-publishing and and working with other players, but I think snatching remedy from working with Microsoft and snatching them up and being a, a kind of a first party studio for them. Although I know they have a lot of third person action games, but, uh, Mm. you know, I, I think, I think control is a wonderful game that probably needed a little bit more help than it got. Uh, Mm -hmm. uh, But I think Remedy would be a great choice for them. Uh, And then also with the moves they're making with with Deathloop and and Ghostwire Tokyo, I think maybe Bethesda at some point, although I know ZeniMax is pretty huge, but uh, especially since... You know, Microsoft has has Obsidian now doing basically Bethesda games with the Outer Worlds and Avowed. Like, I think it would be smart to actually battle them head on with something like that. Uh, plus, you get Starfield and uh, you know Fallout and Sky and uh, Elder Scrolls and what Evil Within, I guess, would be one. Evil you get Within, all those. Yeah. Ideas. yeah. Plus, you would get Doom, Wolfenstein, those games too. Uh, Prey, Dishonored, like you get all those games and all those studios. So, but I think I think Zenimax is probably a little bit too big for Sony to maybe go after. So, those are my choices. Uh, I was thinking, yeah. So I, I agree with you on Remedy. I think, especially with the success of Control, that's an easy one to go with. Um, the one I'm going to say is Ready at Dawn. Uh, these guys made the order 1886. This would be one where it'd be a little bit out there, but I, I could definitely see this happening. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I, well, didn't they just get purchased by Facebook to make VR oh, games? Oh, did they? Yes, they did. My bad. Don't worry. Oh. That'll end soon. Yeah. <laughs> when everybody gets rid of their <laughs> Oculuses because they have to sign in through Facebook, that'll end very soon. So they'll be up for sale in about a year. <laughs> Give it time, guys. We'll get an order sequel real soon. <laughs> I love my Galahad uh, statue, by the way. Uh, Nelly, what you, what, what you thinking? You know what? This might be kind of dumb, but it, it comes out of my love for wrestling, but I, I would like to see Sony open up THQ again. 
I know they ain't hey, already shut down or whatnot. I'm, I'm you down know? Hey, you but know? I'm like, I don't know how dumb that sounds, but I would love to see THQ come back because what they doing with these wrestling games, I have a problem with. And the last good one I played was, um, I think it was SmackDown versus Raw 2006. And then they just kept giving us junk because they don't have any competition out there. I think my favorite person on the podcast. I think I think the last good wrestling game I played, you had to actually blow in the cartridge to get it to work. Oh, <laughs> was it No that, Mercy? Or I don't know. It was one of those. It was one of those. Was, uh... It was one of those Nintendo sixty four games that they all felt the same, but they were all just different games. <laughs> Could have been WCW versus the World. Something, okay, anyway, I don't know. Go ahead. <laughs> I don't really know what any of them were. One of them came in a blue cartridge. That's all I know. Okay. Okay. We're just going to ignore the fact that... Okay, yeah. WWE 2K20 sucks. Maybe they had the wrong cover artist. Maybe they just put a really bad game. But 19 was good. GM mode was awesome. I'm actually excited for Battlegrounds. <laughs> um, I shouldn't be. But there, there's been some good ones throughout the years. Uh, yeah, I mean, nothing can hold a candle to, to no mercy, but... Man, you got to give some of the newer ones a chance. To be fair, though, Logan, I'm not a wrestling guy, so I don't like go out of my way to play wrestling games. So that that's my excuse. That's fair. I, you know, <laughs> me, I have to do a show every time there's a pay per view. So yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> I'll give you that. I, I'm in the, I'm in agreement with you guys as far. I was thinking Remedy would be a good, uh, was one of the ones that they may want to have their eyes on uh, eye on, but you know it also depends on how how warm Remedy's feeling because I with Remedy just kind of emancipating themselves from like being under Microsoft's thumb, you know, like uh it it it's kind of a it's kind of a slippery slope trying to trying to grab them, you know, mm-hmm. unless right. unless unless Sony comes, you know, like with their A game. I do ha- I do have two more actually. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, the who is it? Supermassive that made Until Dawn. I oh, think. Yeah. I think that. I think they really yeah, missed. Supermassive would be good. Yeah, and yeah. then. Hear me out. Okay. Capcom. See, I, I I've been waiting for this. I don't think it's happening. I, I would say was thinking Capcom, but. I was thinking, I'm with you, Logan. I don't mean to. I don't mean to cut Cap- you off, but I was like, I don't think that's gonna work. It's either okay. it's either Capcom or Konami, just because I don't know. Okay, I, now I, K- Konami, I can see. Yeah, I'm gonna say a dumb one here, and this probably isn't the PlayStation. This this honestly could be a Nintendo discussion. Sega. You know what's funny though? There's actually been a huge rumor that Microsoft is going to work with Sega to release the Xbox under the Sega brand over there because Sega has such a bigger, uh, you know, foothold over there than Microsoft does. And there was, there's, there's always a rumor every two or three years that Microsoft is going to buy Sega Sammy every two or three years. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Just to have a foothold in Japan. But here's the problem. Sega had a chance to work with, Microsoft and they turned that down, and then they had a chance to work with PlayStation or uh, Sony, and they turned that down. So well, that just left was, Sega up and what was what was Sega's opportunity with Microsoft? Uh, Microsoft was going to buy Sega to, because they needed a mascot oh. to battle Mario and and what <laughs> Crash or Jack at the time, and they wanted Sonic to live on as an Xbox brand, and then that deal fell through. Well, and then hey, I think the deal fell through because they saw that Halo was going to be a huge hit, and Master Chief just ended up taking over the Xbox brand. And then they also positioned like that weird Odd World spinoff as they're like, "This is going to be our Mario killer," and it was like, "No, that's no." W- was Sonic Forces originally built to be an Xbox exclusive? For some reason, I'm thinking that was the story. That sounds that sounds about right. I think it honestly, I think it was. Uh, Sonic Heroes was originally going to be an Xbox exclusive. Okay, it was, it was like I knew that, one. Of, it was just one of those two. Yeah, and then I think Sonic 2006, that really the one that everybody looks at as like the bad one, is like I think that was built to be a 360 exclusive, and yeah. then they ended up porting it to to PS3. Um. Well, how about um, how about would because uh because let's let's just say Shinmu Three was a freaking runaway success from the crowdfunding and you know the backing that sony had you think 
Do you think Sony might want to grab some of those assets and uh, and revive that company full time? Um, I see. I don't. I don't really know anything about Shenmue except for at the time it was an open world game that was really unique with the way you could interact with the world. That was that was like its big thing, and I. I've never played Shenmue. I have no affection for Shenmue. And I, all, <laughs> from all accounts, I feel like Shenmue fans loved Shenmue 3. And everybody yeah. who else wasn't a Shenmue fan was like, what's happening? What is this thing? You know, and I, I think, like, I think actually Yakuza actually took, you know, what Shenmue was doing and evolved it yeah. and made it into a game that people enjoy. Right, mm-hmm. I think I think that's always been the thing that Yakuza hung its hat on for a while. Was like, this is just better Shenmue. Oh. Yeah, yeah. As a matter of fact, the, the I guess the quote is uh, Shenmue walks so Yakuza could run. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's always Kojima. There's always Kojima Productions. That could be the studio mm-hmm. that. You know, we were talking about this the other day, or maybe it was Sunday night when we were in our meeting. It's like, um, you know, they bought Insomniac for what was it, like two hundred twenty million. And if you offer Kojima four hundred million, I mean, is that fair? What what do you what realistically could you pay Kojima for a studio? And really, there has to be something in there about well, Kojima has to be the creative director for anything that comes out of the studio. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I think that's a possibility. Except, like, I don't know if he has this weird thing about being under somebody because of the way Capcom or Konami treated him at the end like yeah. towards the end you know like, yeah that's like the only thing but i feel like sony would be way better than uh konami at that point yeah because uh, i feel like i just feel like sony no would know like kojima's legacy and what he wants to do and mm-hmm. how he wants to do things and i feel like sony really gives their teams the creativity or the the freedom to be creative uh mm. you know so you can't micromanage a legend, and as long as they respect that, I think yeah, it could work. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for real. Yeah. The only the only thing I'm don't, yeah like the only thing I will say, and it, it basically lines up with what you were saying is uh is I feel like Kojima would be just a little gun shy of like you know like becoming a partner you know well not well I I say partner but you know he'd be working for another. For another, you know, like major entity in in the gaming business and stuff like that, and I feel like he'd be he'd be a little gun shy, even though you know Death Stranding has done phenomenally well on on PS4 on his run on PS4 and PC so far. Mm-hmm. Uh, and once again, you know, like Death, Death Stranding is also just another game that got that propelled even more sales once it crossed over to PC. Mm-hmm. Do you think? Yeah. Do you think that Death Stranding will make its way anywhere else? I mean, I know I, like. I think I think uh, wait you, Logan you don't think so because I, I think, think there's so. a I think there's an opportunity it may show up at least on the on the Xbox. I mean I if I wouldn't had, be surprised if it released on PC. I'd agree with you. The problem is is that I think if Xbox wanted it they would that has especially after a PS4 release that has Xbox Game Pass written on it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And if it hadn't already released on PC, I would say that Microsoft has would have the want and the need to pull it there. I In fact, it's, it's already a... on release. Oh, sorry, Logan. I didn't mean to cut you off. I'm sorry. Go ahead. The, the fact that it's already made, have a, has a presence on PC, I don't see Xbox ready to pull the trigger. I, c- I could see it being like a Yakuza situation where maybe a couple years from now, it shows up it on shows Game Pass up. for like, you know, three or four months, you know, because uh, that's how Metal Gear was. Like, Metal Gear showed up. I mean, I know it was on Xbox originally, but when it came to Game Pass, it was only on Game Pass for, like, four months, and then they took it off. Uh, but then they gave it to everybody free with gold anyway. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I just... I, I it just it's, it's just this weird thing where, like, yeah, it came to PlayStation first, but 505 is technically publishing it on PC, and I wonder if they have, like, the rights to publish it uh, I wonder if they just Sony paid for it to not appear on Xbox One, but maybe it could appear on Series X or, you know, maybe get a PS5 upgraded version type thing. Although 505 likes to uh, mess with people's minds with those uh, <laughs> upgrades on the next console. Maybe they'll release an ultimate edition <laughs> that will. Yeah. Uh, could happen. So. All right. Uh, so, uh, so Nelly. 
I saved it for you. So you ready? Uh, what, Little Nightmares too? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, what's not to be excited about? I don't I don't know if you guys played the first one. Um, I'm actually going back to play the first one. I actually like the storyline to this because it's kind of like cat and mouse, but you know where the cat is all the time and you just don't want to get caught at this point. I like the whole uh, platformer feel to it, mm-hmm. but I also like the kind of horror aspect to it because it's more of like use the environment to hide rather than, hey, I have a gun. I can easily shoot you. It's more like survival and hide. So I'm actually pretty excited for this. Have you guys played Little Nightmare? I played the first one, and yeah, it, it kind of mixes for that horror and like just suspense and kind of like a perfect balance there. It's such a great game. Uh, if you haven't played it, you, you have to play it. It's so good. And yeah. like the whole storyline is kind of messed up because it's like, okay, you, you're on like the ship or whatnot, and right. as you progress through the game, it's like, holy crap, they're eating the kids, man. Like what kind of sick mess is this <laughs> so i'm i'm still kind of confused about the geisha but i mean I, th- I think the whole game is beautiful you get i like the scale of the game because it's like you're a doll in this huge mm. doll house but again like the geisha kind of threw threw me off so i mean it's still a great game but i'm not sure if uh little nightmares 2 has co-op that's what i'm hoping for i would like to see co-op because I, I noticed you do have a uh, another character running around with you. I forgot the character's name. But hey, I think it's I think it's really interesting when these smaller games get sequels. You know, because like a lot of the times the the first game kind of blows up in a way, and then sometimes you see the sequel just kind of like fizzle out. You know, and, and yeah. I I just yeah. I hope. I hope this this game does well because that that I know a lot of people love that first game, uh, so I I didn't I didn't play it I don't I don't do scary games sorry guys I'm a big I'm a big wuss. Uh, this is look they are everybody's already making me play Resident Evil Two remake for uh, our October book club and I'm like I hate no, everyone no 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 if you want to be traumatized play Dead Space One. Now I play, yes. look, I I played oh, yes. I played the first I played the first probably hour of Dead Space and I'm like Nope. Sorry, I'm out. Goodbye. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like it, it's funny because last last year for Halloween, like I was I was trying to sell I was trying I, I played Dead Space two and three like like nothing because like they're they're my favorite. They're well they're 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 my favorites. So not not saying anything bad about the first one. But uh but it was something about playing Death Space One. Uh, and I had some friends. I was like, "Hey, like this is my favorite horror game. I'm going to show you some of it." And then, like, just playing the intro, I was already getting PTSD from my original run through of the game. <laughs> it was just, it was just crazy. Um, Dead Space Two. I got, a, I got a weird story here on this one. So I was fifteen, sixteen years old when Dead Space Two when I started. When I did a playthrough of Dead Space Two, my parents were, uh, my parents were out of the house, and um, I had to be playing with my subwoofer right next to me on the floor. And a certain moment happened, and um, well, the uh, the back door opened, and. Uh, <laughs> This sounds like a very yeah. bad decision. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I may have, I may have sharded a little bit from that <laughs> game. Like it, it was, it was scary as hell, dude. And I flipped out, <laughs> and I couldn't play it for like two weeks. I was just mortified, and I was like, okay, well, maybe if I don't play with the volume on, and then I, then I made it through. Yeah, Desmond Two had a lot of Desmond Two had a lot of jump scares. Uh, I will say that, but the but man. When they forced you to walk back onto the Eastern Mora, mm-hmm. I couldn't take. I couldn't take it. I, I had to stop playing the game that night. Like, like, because like, you know, I was like, "Hey, like, that's the Eastern Mora." Like, and then you know, something happens, and then all of a sudden, Eastern Mora is your escape, and it's like, uh, "Oh hell no!" Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't it's take it. I had, to, work. I, had to, I had to stop my playthrough for that for for that run that night. <laughs> yeah, I just I couldn't do it. Yeah. 
Ah, All man. right. I don't know how you guys play scary games. I don't know how anybody plays scary games. I don't understand people who like to be scared because I'm just like, no, pass. <laughs> the rush, the adrenaline makes you feel yeah. alive. That's that's part of it, but I tell you what, man, like Alien Isolation, I still don't have the stones to play that game. <laughs> yeah. Plays best on Switch, uh, by the way. Oh, but, yeah, for real. Uh, yeah. That's uh, what it, they it, say. Well, no, it's it, the Digital Foundry uh, be- basically sold me on it. I'm like, do I need to spend the money again, even though I just bought like the like the collectors, the the the, the deluxe edition on PC for on on sale for crazy cheap. Uh, but but uh, Alien the alien movies like they gave me night terrors when i was a kid that you know first of all like you know why was i that young watching those movies and to begin with but they gave me night terrors and so when i saw the when i saw the the preview builds for alien isolation it was almost like i was getting that whole like night terror situation again because man like whatever they did that xenomorphs ai was just ridiculous (laughs) <laughs> and I was not ready for it, <laughs> so I was like, uh, "I have, I have this game in my collection. I, I have not played it, and the only reason why I haven't played it is because no, I haven't gotten around to it. I'm too chicken to play it. That's the problem." <laughs> yeah. Oh man, good times. Good. All right. Yeah. Good times. All right. Question though. Question before we continue. Yes. Because I haven't played it, and I want to. Did anybody play PT back in the day? Yes. Not now. Okay, that game. That game is also another game that messed with my sensibilities. Uh, because um, because, okay, this is one of the reasons. This is one of the reasons why I give a lot of respect to the Silent Hill uh, franchise is because Silent Hill played with your emotions. Like it wasn't so much about trying to scare you just outright. It just played with your emotions to the point where it was like, oh my God, oh my God, I can't take this. I have to put it down. Every Silent Hill game I played I, I played had that had that had that feeling for me. And so when I got PT and I'm and I'm kicking myself because if I I removed the I removed the demo off of my off of my system. And now I'm hearing that if you if you still have a PlayStation Three that has a PT demo on it, it can sell upwards of seventeen hundred bucks. Wow, yeah, that's crazy. Should have made, made that investment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, and now you can't even get it. I heard. Wow. Yeah, you can't. Oh, yeah, you can't. There's no way. There's no way to get it. Um, but um, you never played PT. Uh, nope. Okay. So, so that was one that I I'm missed. just gonna, I'm just gonna set this up for your imagination here. Just imagine being in this like really rancid house that's like that's like that's like playing your sensibilities, and you go to hide in the bathroom, and there's like an unborn fetus that's like crying and tr- and trying to get out in the sink. Mm. Yeah, delightful. Yeah, yeah. That basically. Yes, I've seen it, and I. I've seen that part, and I've seen whether like the refrigerator is bleeding over your head, and oh my goodness, lights yeah. changing in the hallway. <laughs> so yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, so, but uh, I think that's where Resident Evil Seven bit that off from. But I'm gonna just shut up now. You know what? I, honestly, I feel like Resident Evil Seven kind of got some got some inspiration from PT. You know, and Resident Evil Seven is another one that I that I have a hard time stomaching. But also, but the main reason why is because like I'm just terrible at first person perspective games anyway. So so, you know, when you got the freaking mold monster coming out the wall, like it's already like nope, I'm I'm putting the controller down. <laughs> and you want me to play this in VR? Are you out of your mind? <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, so. Uh, so we are at one of our favorite top, or one of our favorite segments of the night. It's called Rumor Control, and basically the way Rumor Control goes is we we try to we try to tackle and talk about and maybe debunk some of the news that we hear because we want everybody out there to make informed decisions about what's going on out there with the PlayStation. But but this is a rumor. This is a rumor that got started because uh, because of a credible source this time. Uh, so. Wow. So yeah, so um, so we know that there is going to be there's going to be some type of backwards compatibility uh, for PS5, but we know but we know now thanks to Ubisoft that uh, that it won't be it won't be backwards compatible with uh, PS3, PS2, or PS1. That hurts if yeah. that is true. <laughs> yeah, 
It, yeah, so let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and you know, Ubisoft is, has been has been trying to walk it back some. Like they they even took down the information saying the information they had about that you know right. is gone. You know, but at the same time, you know, it's like. I know a lot of people were. I know a lot of people were excited about the idea of backwards compatibility and stuff like that. And uh, and I said it on the um, on the Boss Rush podcast uh, on Saturday. Like uh, backwards compatibility is not a factor for me when it comes to the new consoles. It, it hasn't been. And I guess that's because PS3 ruined it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I to me this isn't a huge deal. I mean, I, I buy an X Gen console to play the next gen games it's not you know with 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 the switch having like the um you know super nintendo collection and all that like i get it that that's cool there i just once i once i've played those games i really don't want to go back and play with those graphics and everything when i could be playing the next gen stuff so i don't see it as a huge deal myself yeah i mean i get like i understand backwards compatibility and like it's it's a nice feature right it's it's a it's a nice feature if, especially if you have a lot of digital games and you know that's kind of xbox's big selling point right now is all this backwards compatibility but like it's it's almost like how often do you really use it like it's nice that it's there but i am i like to play the new games right like i i I appreciate backwards compatibility on my Xbox. I really do. And I, I have used it, you know, for right. either stuff that we're recording or, or, you know, just once in a while I, I will go back to an old game like, Oh, this is nice. But it's just like, I buy You're right, Logan, you buy the new console to play the mm-hmm. new games. And mm-hmm. I think, I think it being backwards compatible, backwards compatible with PS4 is, is enough. You know, if yeah, if, if a new if a new Uncharted comes out sometime, right? The rumor the rumor yeah. is what Sony Bend I think is going to make another Uncharted. I think is the rumor right now. But uh, if the new Uncharted comes out, yeah, I can go back and play the Nathan Drake collection because it's backwards compatible. Do I need to? Probably not. You know, I I can maybe play through Uncharted four and that would be enough. Or you know, just watch a a story. Be a story thing on YouTube for ten minutes. Be like, oh, I'm caught up. I remember that. So, I don't know. I as a as a as a dad, as somebody who works full time, like, I want to play the new stuff. I barely have time to play the new stuff, let alone the the, the old stuff. I, you know, I get I get a craving like once or twice a year to maybe drag out like the N64 and play some original stuff, like play Perfect Dark, the way I was used to as a kid, but like. Playing those older games just doesn't have the appeal it used to. When you know, I I had all the free time in the world. I don't have all the free time in the world anymore. So it's like, I want to play my games. I want to get it done with quick. But I want to play the next gen stuff on the next gen consoles. Yeah. Here's the here's the one thing here's the one thing I'll say and and this and you know, okay because I know like as as PlayStation fans and PlayStation fanboys and fangirls and stuff like that, we have a, we have a nice love for all stuff playstation especially the old school playstation stuff because that's why that's why there's this big there's this big thing called the ps5 coming out and stuff like that uh so i have uh, so i have right i know like it's 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 incredible like we we're here you know um here's my here's my thing come on guys like i i have a 70 inch television in my bedroom uh 4k hdr television brag about it there's there is no way. There is no way I am going to. I am going to play freaking Vagrant Story on this thing, and think it's going to look good. Oh, but think of all the pixels you'll see. <laughs> and Vagrant Story is one of my favorite games from the PlayStation One era. One of my favorite. As a matter, as a I, matter of fact, it's probably in my top five. I want to. I want to throw something out here though. Like in terms of what backwards compatibility. Like my thing is. What what I appreciate actually this generation that we started seeing was real remakes of classic games. Yes. Like Resident Evil 2, the Crash games, the Spyro games, Final Fantasy 7, like the mm-hmm. uh, medieval even. Like you see these classic games that you and they look and play and, and like you remember them in your head but now like Crash has fur and it's like a really amazing kind of from the and- ground up 
it yeah, pl- they're amazing. Yeah, yeah, it plays like you remember, but probably slightly better, right? And we're getting Tony Hawk in a couple weeks, and it's like, or this week actually. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, right. it's yeah, like that's. I think that that's what I would like to see from classic games moving forward. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's right. not. It's nice to have the NES and Super NES stuff on my Switch, but I don't remember the last now, time I loaded them up. I'm I'm going to be honest with you. Like I just I'm. I don't know. It's it's that to me the remake thing is is a really big push yeah. and like oh I you want to play this I classic think that's game? The bread and butter. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah the, the other thing I'll add though is like you know like I, I I like I said I know we love our our classic PS1 and PS2 titles. What we sh- what we need to do is once PS5 is launched and is out there and everything, let's start leaning on so- let's try let's start leaning on Sony. Hey. Bring back the handheld market. Get the Vita two out there, and then start porting these old games to that to that system. Because the Vita, the Vita was basically like 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 uh, like two thirds of a PS three. That's how powerful it was. Yeah. And 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 if it, and if it was doing if it was doing like rock star stellar stuff to PS two ports, because I got the Jack and Jacks uh, collection on on the Vita. I got the Ratchet and Clank collection on the Vita. Uh, there was a couple other like like kind of remastered, redone games on the Vita. If it was doing the heavy lifting for PS two games, it will do it will do leaps and bounds of of, of beautiful things for PS one, PS two, and okay. and PS three games. Yeah, yeah, you're not wrong. Yeah. You know right. when I was sitting here listening to everything, I'm like, yeah, I agree with everybody. But I was like, <laughs> man, I was a little heartbroken at first because I did want to go back and play some old school PlayStation 1, 2, and 3 games. No, nah, I understand just, what y'all saying. I can't imagine like seeing those little cheap graphics on a flat screen TV at the moment. It's like, no. Right. <laughs> Let's just so, keep moving forward. Yeah. So out in, out in the chat, uh, Willowist TV, who is also who's also a contributor uh, with us at uh, Boss Rush Games, uh, he he points out the Vita was their least popular system. Why try and bring that back? I'm not saying bring back the Vita per se because I mean like technically the Vita the Vita is a nostalgia system for me at this point. But I'm just saying like you know, and the reason why the Vita was was basically their least popular system is because of the debacle that was with their storage media, the memory cards and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Because I mean, I mean, not uh, because in all seriousness, like what the what Sony what Sony faced with the Vita right now is similar to what Nintendo's facing with the Switch and their cartridges. Their cartridge, their, the price to manufacture their cartridges is so high because it's still technically in a patent situation. That that's why these games take forever to drop down in price, and you know, it, so it's technically the same thing is just a different side of the spectrum, you know, as far as that, uh, uh, because the. It, when people were like, "Hey, like, well, uh, number one was all digital," you know, like uh, that's one thing that s- the Switch can say it doesn't have going for it. Like, you can get digital if you want, but you can still buy physical media. Every uh, uh, and um, and the Vita was the Vita was technically the same thing. Like, it was it was physical media if you wanted to, but they had a bigger push for digital, and not everybody was ready for digital, especially when you know, like I was just on I was just on Amazon today because I had I I was checking my wish list and I had a I, I still have a 64 uh, gigabyte uh, memory stick for the Vita on there, and the sucker is like 149 dollars. Yeah. A hundred. One hundred and forty-nine dollars when I have a freaking two fifty-six SD card that's forty-nine dollars. <laughs> right. Yeah, that was like that was like the big thing with the Vita. Plus, like the back touch screen. If you would have just had like two triggers, like the the way that the Switch does, I think it would have been a lot better as well. Especially yeah. with what they were trying to do with remote play, which mm-hmm. was kind of like revolutionary at the time. Yeah, it was. Right? Like, it, it was. It was pretty. It was pretty impressive. I played a lot of Destiny on the toilet through my Vita before it died. I know that was too much yeah. information for everybody, but it's true. <laughs> Well, I mean, you know, like, uh, like, you know, that's the one thing I will say. It, it, I will say, I, I will say, the one thing that Nintendo probably doesn't always get the most credit about is they freaking kill it in the portable market. Like they, well, Nintendo is a game company. Like they know how they know how to do it. And I mean, shoot, like, you know, like we need more companies to just sit back and pay attention. You know, don't just let the mobile phone market like get you know like hone in on what you're trying to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
so yeah. Anyway, though, going back to this article real fast, uh, the PlayStation Five will support the overwhelming majority of more than four thousand PS4 titles released up to this point. Uh, Sony, uh, Sony senior uh, vice president of platform planning and management uh, Hideki Nishino said back in March. And this was amid the confusions about Sony's plans because somewhere it got leaked out there earlier than before that there was uh, that there was possible backwards compatibility for PS1, PS2, and PS3. Uh, and then the speculation kind of came to a head uh, over the summer. And but now we're pretty much getting concrete, concrete, uh, concrete knowledge that PS4. And you know what? I I love it because we don't have to say goodbye to the games that that we've been you know spending all of our time on like recently you know you know uh you have a ps and also some people are ps5 is going to be their new sony system because there are some people that just didn't buy a, a ps4 and they'll have an opportunity to play Who's some of these ps <laughs> oh come on we know there's some die there's some diehard xbox one fans out there i was like oh never sony <laughs> Uh, I mean, e- even I like I like and vice versa. I mean, <laughs> yeah, we don't want that fool here. <laughs> yeah, I mean, even me as like someone who like really plays all my third party games on Xbox and really just a- likes my Xbox, you know, more to be honest, like I I do. But like the Sony just has a lot of exclusives that are worth playing, you know, and yeah, I if. To me, like if you're just gonna skip a console because you don't, you're playing this fanboy game. It's just kind of like, you know, I, I mean, I yeah, get I it. Just... It's it's fun to an extent, but th- there is some people who just take it way too seriously, and you're just like, whoa, dude. Uh, hey, I used to be a manager at GameStop for like four years. Trust me, they're out there. They're out there. You got you got you I got a... you got people who would rather chop off a leg. Then you know, like then you know, like just just buy buy, t- and the average the average gamer usually usually has two consoles. I have a PS4 and a Switch, but mm-hmm. I also have a PC. You know, and and because I have a PC, that kind of edged edged out my factor for getting an Xbox. Yeah, but that's different because I think Xbox is viewing PC as a viable place to play those games now. Exactly. Too. Like yeah. they like the marketing for Xbox compared to the marketing for PlayStation is totally different at Microsoft's mm-hmm. trying to sell you on game pass. And then you just have like a nice box to play it on or your PC or whatever. And then if you don't want to do game pass, if you're only a halo fan, right? Like you can buy those games on steam for, you know, I think the master chief collection is 40 bucks. And yeah, uh, you know, I, I think I'm sure halo five and infinite are on their way to steam as well. But like, you don't have to get Game Pass, you, and like whatever you buy on Steam, they're still getting thirty percent of that or seventy percent of that. So, I mean, they they're in a position where they're trying to, they don't care where you play their games as long as you get into their ecosystem in in Game Pass or whatever. And if you don't want it in their ecosystem and you just want to pick and choose which ones you play, you can go to Steam, right? Like that's that's their whole thing. And Sony is kind of the opposite at this point, you know, I mean, I know we talked about that rumor that they want to put some games on PC, but like their primary thing is we have a box. We make games for this box. You will play on this box. (laughs) That's the truth. (laughs) That is the truth. So, uh, which, you know, the the more and more of these things that are coming out about the Xbox, I think probably was the smarter move (laughs) because like, there's so many confusing things, especially surrounding call of duty and some Mm -hmm. like the madden stuff like it's just a a hot mess of confusion over there so oh yeah all right any final words on that on that segment uh let's see we uh uh, i'm just looking over some stuff uh go ahead any final words uh no not for me i'll just go share a weird story but it's okay (laughs) (laughs) I, I mean, this is the podcast to do it on. Yeah, this is this is the about, episode. If you got a weird I story, to, I was about to say, can it be any weirder than anything that's been going on tonight? <laughs> is it about feet? Actually, no, it's not. Actually, <laughs> no, yeah. no feet stories here. But, but um, I had two friends on my Facebook feed arguing over Xbox and PlayStation because one is on the Xbox side. And the other is like on the PlayStation side, and I'm like, they sitting here cursing each other out. I'm like, listen, y'all need to take that on y'all feet. Don't be bringing that fool over here. Y'all know I don't do the whole console war thing. <laughs> uh, 
Yoshi fan. At this point, at this point, is there a console war though? That's that's a good question, actually. Is there is there a yeah, console war? <laughs> I mean, I still think it is, but listen. I think it, I think it's more <laughs> like each one has their specialty. Each one has their specialty. You know, if you're if you're yeah. into good single player exclusives, Sony's your place. If you want to play as a community, you want to play with your friends, Xbox is great for it. If you want to play the games that you know your grandkids are into, let's play the Nintendo. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm yeah. not gonna disagree with that. You know, it's yeah. pretty straightforward. That I think, I think even PlayStation fans can tell you that Xbox Live is probably the superior service to play online games. Uh, oh, for real? Yeah, yeah. I would even argue on that. Um, okay, so uh, let's see. I I threw it out there to the audience uh, if we had any questions because I don't think we had anything uh, that was submitted to us uh, over social media or through our normal channels. Uh, I feel like this is a repeat of last week's question, but I'll go ahead and ask it again. Uh, what other games uh, will we guys look for modern di- modern updates? As a matter of fact, this is a repeat. Of, this is a repeat of last week's question, but we can do it again. Um, and, Paper, uh, escape, you cowards. And, uh, and 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 Nelly, you do uh, you do have a fan out there because uh, Parasite Eve was brought up in, in the Twitch chat as a um, as I a. Uh, I want. I want a. Shout out. Shout out. <laughs> I want a Resident Evil 2 style Dino Crisis remake. <laughs> yes, yes. Where's that at? Yes, I agree. Dinosaurs I agree. are cool again, right? They they made another Jurassic Park set of movies that aren't great, but they exist, right? Yeah, that exists. Sure. Um, we we kept it we kept it kind of we did keep we did keep it centric to uh, PlayStation. So I guess let's, let's still keep it centric because you know what? Even though technically. Uh, I'll just say this anyway, even though it wasn't technically a PlayStation release, it, it did show up on PlayStation. But man, if they could do uh, Chrono Trigger like they did the Final Fantasy VII remake, okay. they could have they they could have all my money, <laughs> all the money, guys, all of it. Just, just... That, that's how I'm hoping a Parasite <laughs> Eve remake <laughs> comes out. <laughs> The Square Enix exec- executives are wiping their butts with Laurent's singles. <laughs> just <laughs> uh, what was another? I'm trying to think. What was another like PlayStation? What was another great PlayStation game that was out there? I'm trying to think. I I, I have a ton of them. Oh snap! The Tenchu games. Tenchu wasn't that wasn't Sekiro originally supposed to be Tenchu? Oh game? Yeah. yeah, I think it was. Yeah, um, the Tenchu games would do it. Um, the, in that case, give me some Bushido Blade. <laughs> that was <laughs> that was another one. Hey, that there. was the one I called last week. <laughs> oh man, there's so many just. There's some questionable PlayStation games out there that had unique ideas, but you know, like, where's my Tombo remake? Right. Uh, <laughs> Logan's oh, wait, space. is that what it's called? Wasn't that the fighting game, Tombo? Yo, yo, no, yo. Oh, okay. hold on, hold on. I used to, I like, I, I love music and rhythm games. Like, where's freaking, no. where, where's freaking Bust a Groove? Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Don't give me hyper. Now you know what happens when I get hyper. I love Bust the Groove. I love Bust the Groove. I play the Groove at the game. Who was your favorite character on Bust the Groove? Was it Frida? Okay, out of the women. It was it, or were Frida or Pinky? Was, oh no, not Pinky. I hated that girl. But um, out of the females, I like Frida, and out of the males, I like Gasso and Heat. Oh, Heat! Oh, Heat was the man. Heat was the guy. Momura, Momura says, uh, "says Parappa the rapper." Didn't they remake Parappa? Didn't it come out? For PS4? Yeah, uh, on PS on PS4, right? Yeah, I thought that was Vita. Was it? Not, well, I, they did Vita, but I remember. Playing it, the demo on PS4, I remember playing that. I think me and um, me and cousin played that on PlayStation Two. <laughs> well, 
Now, Parappa has been getting a whole bunch of like a whole bunch of like remaster and re-releases because I remember it was on it was on PSP. Um, it was uh, the last the last time we saw it was on PS3. Wait, no. See, I'm gonna turn my PlayStation 4 on later, and I'm gonna see if because I could have sworn I played it on like the modern PlayStation controller. So I I could be wrong though. Um, uh, man, Jet Moto. Give me some Jet okay, Moto. Yes. Oh, Jet Moto. Oh, Jet hey. Moto. hey give remember give the, me uh, Burnout Revenge. Or, uh, yes. Uh, give remember me uh, the, uh, Remember those those MTV Extreme Sports games? Uh, what were they called? Like like one uh, extreme, two extreme, oh, three two extreme. extreme. Oh my gosh. All right, okay, you know what, guys? Let's just let's just go all out. You know they made it for the Wii, but let's bring it back. Wipeout. Let's do yes. it. Give me a white. Pretty out. much Fall Guys. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty much Fall Guys. Uh, <laughs> wow. Un- Unjammer Lammy. Wow. Good one. <laughs> uh, man, I don't. Is that, uh, is that cousin going off in a chat again? Yep. yep. Yeah, Hydro Thunder. Oh, yeah. I Hydra mean, Thunder. if if we're. Okay, cousin. If we're if we're remaking Final Fantasy Tactics, why don't we just get some uh Suikoden in there too? Hey, so, hey, yeah. you guys hey, you guys remember a game called Ogre Battle? Yes. Like it originally came out on Super Nintendo, but then they um but then they re released it on PS one. Yeah. Oh man. Yes. Man. What what was that fighting game everybody loved? Bloody Roar? Yes. Oh my god. Yes. Gosh. Yeah. I hope Ed's that not was, watching because he's gonna a... freak out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I cannot remember. I cannot remember his name, but he was a freaking like he was a badger, and man, he would light you up with those claws. <laughs> wow, man, man, those are nostalgia, man. I, t- I tell you, nothing like it. PlayStation. All yeah. right, so, uh, so, uh, I guess, I guess we can go into the wrap up now. Like, uh, we, we've been having fun. Like, shit, we've been at this yeah. for 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 a couple of hours now. Yes, I cannot wait to edit this episode. <laughs> we are done. <laughs> you know, I, was like, I feel bad for Corey. <laughs> hey, this is this is not the worst. This this is not the worst one I've ever given him because there's like a there's like a three and a half, almost four hour podcast. <laughs> yeah, Laurent's one v one was like three hours long. <laughs> so that was that was fun. It took me like two days to edit because I was lame. Blame Ed. I have mine on Saturday. <laughs> I always blame Ed. It's fine. Oh, oh, um, you know what? One more game. One more game, and then we'll move to the wrap up. Uh, remember the fighting game, Toe Ball Number One? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That is that... popped up right here on my screen. That's what I thought when y'all said uh the other game. I was like, is that the one, the fighting game where you run through the castle and all that? But if man, <laughs> how about? How about that freaking? How about that freaking like that 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 dungeon crawler uh, se- segment of that game, yeah. where where you run into a room and all of a sudden you fighting for your life against one of the bo- one yeah, of the bosses? Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> I like the uh, Peter Pan guy. I don't know why. I guess because he was like Bruce Lee, and I like Home. I think that was the name, the robot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, guys. So, uh, so what have you guys been playing or doing with your lives uh, this past week? Um, well, I can tell you that I revamped our website and had a lot of meetings with different people. <laughs> so that was that was that's been my weekend, including our hey. uh, our video team meeting this weekend. Yeah, which that was, really was that was absolutely epic. <laughs> yeah, that was a great meeting, though. So many cool ideas. I'm so happy with those ideas. They're so good. Uh, not gonna give them away on the air though. So sorry, sorry, audience. Uh, Logan has been sending us cool videos in the chat of intros oh, and just just dynamic things. I'm like, oh my gosh, I man, they uh, and, and Logan. And somehow, you are... I for, somehow I forgot to send the 37 assets to uh, Panic this morning on something I needed for him to render. But yeah, <laughs> some of the stuff, dude, it's it's, it's pretty cool. I, I got one that's in the making right now for that other thing that we that we're working on. That maybe the battlegrounds thing. Yeah, and uh, oh, I love I love how cheesy and just how wrestly it looks from like early to mid 90s wrestling. <laughs> just, I love it it's so. Uh, it's so awesome. Uh, uh, 
Go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say I, I've been playing a lot of Assassin's Creed Odyssey this weekend right. though, because that's literally the only game I play these days apparently. So, uh, and Destiny, but yeah. Uh, I recorded an episode of One v One for Land Party because you know we had that name first. I'm convinced. Um, it's coming out tomorrow. It's with Josh Biddick. He does a podcast called The Up and Comer. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's kind of funny best friend as well. Amazing guy. Uh, every time I talk to him, he's absolutely fantastic. So him and I did make movies for about eh, 45 minutes. Pretty awesome. And then um, I really haven't been playing games because I've been creating stuff. And so uh, hopefully you guys get to see some of the stuff coming out soon. Yeah, very, very good stuff. I'm happy. I'm really happy with that stuff that you're doing. It's, it's awesome. This, All right. The second I can create a top ten people, you're gonna see one of the coolest intros I've ever made. So. All right. All right. And how about our typo queen? Uh, I started control. <laughs> I didn't get far because I had homework. But they're gonna be shutting down our school website starting at 10 p.m. for the next three days. So guess what? <laughs> <laughs> it's just maintenance. It's just maintenance. It comes back up at 3:30 in the morning. But still, I know what I'm gonna be doing my time. I'm gonna be playing more control. Nice. Control's a good well, one. Well, even though I paraded the PS4 version of uh, Horizon Zero Dawn around there, I went ahead and spent the money and, and bought the PC version of Horizon Zero Dawn. So I'll actually be starting that th- uh, this week, and uh, and I will finally and I will finally get back in Logan's good graces. <laughs> Not only if you play it on PlayStation, though. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, it doesn't, count, on PC, doesn't yeah. count if you play it on PC. Oh, oh, Ten bucks. <laughs> Wow! So you just, let you, me waste, you, you just let me waste my money, man. Unless you get that <laughs> platinum trophy, you've never played it. <laughs> Even then, it's like have you played it three times already. Mm. Okay, 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 okay. No lie here, I've kind of lost my love uh, of uh, of of trophy hunting. Uh, the last the last game the last game I willfully platinumed was Dead Space Three, and the only reason why I willfully platinum Dead Space Three is because I dead I platinum Dead Space Two and Dead Space One. <laughs> And I just lost my drive to start platinuming games at at that point. Horizon could make you fall back in love with, with trophy hunting. It, it is that good of a game to get it back. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, there, there's a couple of trophies. It's like, dude, I'll do that just because it's fun. It's like some of the hunting trophies. It's like, heck yes. That's even exactly though, what it was. Even doing. though I will admit, I do miss I do miss hearing that little, that little trophy bling noise. I miss it. Boink. Uh, play Fall Guys for an hour. You'll get like five trophies right there. <laughs> <laughs> Better get those five wins in a row to get that platinum, though. <laughs> the dumbest platinum ever. I know. That's so the stupid. The best thing ever. <laughs> <laughs> uh. All right, so uh, let's go ahead. Uh, it's time to wrap this up. Um, I've had fun tonight. Uh, how about you guys? Heck yeah. Yeah. This is this is. That's- Ever. Yeah. <laughs> I'm ready to go crawl into bed and take my socks off and just. You know. <laughs> All right. It rears his ugly head one more time. <laughs> or it's ugly toes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, uh, all right. So, so, Logan, where can we catch you at? I uh, catch you on Twitter at Logan Corkins, and of course, check out Land Party wherever you get your podcast. All right, Nelly. I'm on Twitch at, at Baby. No, Brat Face. Sorry, that's an old handle. Brat Face underscore 87. And on Twitter, I am Planet Nelly. Nelly is spelled N3 L L I E. All right, and uh, and you guys can find me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash exodus803. That's E-X-O-D-U-S-803. That's also my Twitter handler, uh, Twitter handle, as well as uh, my PSN, my Steam ID, and my Xbox Live ID. So come find me there. And, uh, and Boss Man, where can we find you? Hold on, hold on, hold on. You missed your number one. And you can also catch me on OnlyFans.com. Yeah. At- <laughs> <laughs> PC fetish. Yeah. PC muscle race. Get it right. PC muscle race. <laughs> Exodus 803 means a lot of different things there. So. 
Are those throat. are those sizes? Are those like God number of items God you have hanging from your? I don't know. The book of Exodus talks about the Ten Commandments, also known as my toes. Oh gosh. I mean, I mean, just for the just for the career boss for us, I'll I'll uh, if you guys are interested, I'll give you a five dollar promo for three days. Oh jeez! <laughs> oh man! Uh, this wow! This this. Hey, you guys started it. I, you guys started it. I was fair. I was trying you to outro us. I was trying to outro us. <laughs> it actually all started earlier with all those bad dad jokes, and then it came into this. So. Uh, you, hey, hey, hey! At least Megan, 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 has, Megan hasn't yelled at us for like forty-five minutes, so I think we're good. Uh, she probably passed out. She probably was drinking too many white claws and passed out somewhere it's usually what happens <laughs> and then i'll get a message at three o'clock in the morning i I'm, i have it i my head hurts and i hate everything you said it's, it's what it'll say so nelly your nelly your cousin is a fool <laughs> are, are, are you are you looking at the twitch chat <laughs> Uh, Remember, Corey, the thumbnail is this is the feed episode. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Which, Corey, play, Corey. Which, which PlayStation character do you think has the best feet? Oh, it's creative. It's not even funny. I mean, it's just got <laughs> Imagine the mold. Imagine the mildew. Imagine I mean, the, that is the high quality stank. Oh, geez. Imagine, like, the, the calluses and the, the nasty toenails and just gross. See, this is how I know. This is how I know how culturally inaccurate like shows like Vikings and Game of Thrones and all that stuff is. No, there's no way all those people are that pretty. There's no way. You don't know. You pre- weren't there. <laughs> that pretty and that clean. You well, I, I, I guess you're right there. But <laughs> no, man, Vikings were pretty much the mullets of like the 18th century. You know, business up front, and then when they need to party, comb the beard into a nice like little uh, man bun. <laughs> uh, I was what's thinking that? Nina Williams from Tekken 2 because she's fighting in heels. <laughs> hey, 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 don't, hey, don't, don't discount her sister though. Come on, man. Anna's got style. Okay. Yeah, Anna got a swag. <laughs> hey, Anna's not. Oh, hey, Anna's, uh, Anna's my girl. <laughs> oh, talk about some busted toes. Oh, jeez. Mm. <laughs> mm. And he's always playing those, uh, those, those, uh, those, those wooden sandals. That, what the gators? Uh, he's always playing in those. So come on, man. You, you, know, you know, you know, he's got some ultra calluses. God dang! Oh, I, I, Jesus. I, I, I guarantee you, uh, Tekken's executive per, uh, producer Harada is listening right now. He's like, oh, oh I got, God. I got words for these guys. <laughs> Man, all right, is... Corey, where can we find you at? Oh man, oh yeah, uh, you can find me at I am Corey HD on Twitter and Instagram. Sorry guys, I don't have an OnlyFans account. I I know you've been requesting it. Maybe. Well, <laughs> just kidding. Uh, according, uh, according, according to social media, I could I could coach you in one of those. You, know. you could, maybe <laughs> yeah, you could. Uh, but you can also you can find me on our Xbox show Arsenal X, and you can find me on our Nintendo show. Nintendo Power Block and our Destiny show Tower Casuals. Um, so you can find me at all those places. Uh, yeah. All right. And if you guys want to see and hear more of us, check us out over at bossrushgames.com. Take a look at the week ahead. For, uh, you'll see our schedule for all of our shows, and you'll also find some more information and details about us. And and check out our entire backlog of podcasts on there because uh, because you thought the Crossroads po- podcast was a was a hoot. And let's 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 be honest. We're the best. We're the best. <laughs> we're the best. <laughs> this episode was pretty good. <laughs> Corey, what was it like to be a part of a successful podcast for once? <laughs> uh, I don't know. I'll let you know when you get there. Logan, you're about to get oh. you're, you're about to get us yanked off the air. <laughs> <laughs> I need too much background stuff. I mean, this is, this is the price. <laughs> Logan's too important now. <laughs> <laughs> He's making he's making my Nintendo Power Block intro. Okay, I can't, I can't. Oh well, you know what? That's important. <laughs> it's somewhere in the list. <laughs> and I guarantee you, as soon as the intro for for Power Block gets up there, all of a sudden Logan will no longer be a part of the crew. <laughs> yeah. Where did Logan go? He's he's been, he's been kicked off the island. <laughs> 
Oh, oh but yeah. Link, goodbye. Actually, Nintendo, I sold him to Nintendo so they could use his body for cartridges. Oh, God. <laughs> Nintendo would like, oh, hey, why not? <laughs> Nintendo would love you for that, actually. Uh, I, 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 feel like, I feel like one of the main reasons why Nintendo's still in the game is because of human sacrifices. Oh, gosh. I... <laughs> Every time you hear it, it's a me. It's a me. It's a me. <laughs> To me, wait, wait, is that guy still doing the voice for? Yeah, for, he is. He just he, he is. just narrated High Score also. The, oh, the documentary on Netflix. He was supposed yeah. to. Uh, he was supposed to be down here at uh, MegaCon, and I was looking forward to meeting him. Him and Troy Baker, and I was, mm. all of a sudden here come Corona. Uh, <laughs> Troy plans. Baker. <laughs> I, I will say this uh, because, um, like I said, I used to work in a GameStop store. So they always wanted a, uh, a first party Nintendo title in like the uh, any of the Nintendo kiosks and stuff like that. So it always happened to be a Mario title or a title where where Charles Martinet is the voice is the is the main voice actor. So just imagine eight hour eight and a half hour shift hearing just that that wow. wailing and screaming and just like. So I told myself if I'm ever at one of these conferences and I see the guy, I'm 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 judo chopping him right in the throat. Mm-hmm. It, it I'm, and it's nothing personal. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> I, nothing personal. It's nothing think against. If I, think if I ever meet Jeff Kylie. Oh. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. He's getting he's getting dragged behind stage and getting, he's literally getting dragged. <laughs> um. No, I'll just tell him Kojima's backstage and he'll be like. <gasps> <laughs> You he just write out. You just write on your fist, Ko and Jima. He embarrassed him. My lover, I'll be there in a minute. He embarrassed himself that night at the Game Awards oh uh, two years ago. God. He embarrassed himself. He doesn't want to admit it, but he did. He embarrassed himself at the E3, like the following year, where some, he had some panelists with him, and they're like, "Well, don't you know everything? Or you're just like," and, and I, he made some hand gesture, and I couldn't exactly make it out. But he's like, don't, "Aren't you and Kojima just like this?" And, and Jeff's like, blushing, and it's like, "Well, I, I really don't know him that well." It's like, <laughs> oh, yeah. "Oh man, come on." Best no, friends. I remember. Uh... I remember the, what was it the uh, the final year that Jack Tretton was the uh, was the United was the North American president of uh, of Sony like Jack yeah like Jack kind of like <laughs> raked him over too <laughs> I can't Jeff was asking some questions and Jack just was not here for his nonsense that night <laughs> he's a good guy he does a lot of great things for the gaming community the game awards is awesome but like dude you're just a creepy dude <laughs> he's like he's like super fan ninety nine. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Oh god. Hey. Uh, uh, oh. 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 But by the way, uh, you know, like, like, like I said earlier, if you guys have any problems with any stuff I said, at me on Twitter, exodus eight zero three. I'd love to have a conversation with you about why Final Fantasy Eight is the worst Final Fantasy game ever. And we can do, say, a, we can do and, a whole podcast on that. And that doesn't mind my come out you, did. <laughs> and, I, and, and, I, and I say this knowing full well if Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles exists. I say that with that knowledge. Uh, At me. <laughs> do it. All right. That's our time for tonight. I want to thank everybody that was out there to check this out tonight. Thank you for participating along with us and catch me outside. <laughs> you cousin. It's like don't. It's like it's like don't let me see you on this. Don't let me catch you on the street. Oh my god! We love you guys. Thanks for hanging out with us tonight. It was a blast, and we will be back next week. Uh, same same bat time, same bat channel for some more PlayStation news. This has been the Crossroads Podcast. Have a good night, everybody. Hashtag the fetish. <laughs> <laughs>